Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. This is the 10th day in the year 2019. I hope you'll all join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> First on our agenda is the introduction of, minute, uh, of members, and of course, we have Frank DeLuca here to begin as he traditionally does. FAU 90 representative, Frank DeLuca. Brian Warburton. Jones, I'm not a citizen. My name is Jones, also a citizen. Mike Bluff. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen representative. David Moore. Stephen LeBranch. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, under old business, we have information requests. We did get an update on the questions regarding the uh, selectman's lawyer. Um, distributed to you just now. And so we I, I, apparently we need to update the uh, information request spreadsheet because he's no longer non-responsive, right? Correct. Right which makes us all feel better. Well, let's clarify that. We got the response, but basically we got nothing. So technically, we got a response. But Regina, I think you would agree. It's like... But it was responsive. I, I understand, but the, vote, the people at home need to know this so that they can look, watch the meeting. So for the people at home, the town attorney basically said nothing. They're not going to change anything. Thank you. Well, I'm interpreting the answer to be simply refuse the answer. You could look at it that way, too. Well, that's all I'm interested in is the status So, yeah. at the moment. So what we did was we asked, uh, through the protocol, the, the uh, selectman's lawyer to uh, answer a couple of legal questions, and uh, he, did not, he refused to do so. He gave an explanation, printout of that is with every member here, um, <coughs> he basically said uh, that he gave opinions to the selectmen, and and the selectmen make the decisions, and it's basically you know not the concern of the budget committee, more or less, I guess. Regina, you want to comment? Yes, I believe he basically reiterated what I tried to explain the other night, last night. <coughs> We had a discussion in public so that everyone in public that was watching the meeting or could subsequently streamline it could see the discussion. And then he also said that the Budget Committee is certainly free to consult with New Hampshire Municipal Association concerning your questions. This has been authorized by the Board of Selectmen to the Chairman and Vice Chairman for some time now. Accordingly, I will not be appearing at your meeting tonight to provide any answers than these. And that is because he's been working on something else all day long that I've been receiving emails about all day long. So I think this email <coughs> is the answer that we were looking for. The discussion that he had with the Board of Selectmen was done publicly on Monday night. And we reaffirmed the decision we priorly made. Are you, are you saying the status that I put in is incorrect? No, I say the committee can put the status in whatever What's they want, but in my opinion, yes. Do you think the status is incorrect? It's not satisfied? No, I didn't. the status is refused. The request was refused. That's the status, refused. Whatever you... Do you object to that? That he didn't answer those specific <coughs> no, questions? No, no, no. The only question on the table is what the proper status <coughs> is of the request. And I received. Believe we received a refusal, yeah. Sure. Okay, we're in agreement, right? <coughs> Any other thoughts or comments? Well, he, he did say that he gave his opinion to the Board of Selectmen and he didn't want to appear here and, and uh, in a contradictory that. position and uh, speak to it. So <coughs> that's the way I understand it. What we need is a clear readout on this questions that you asked him uh, to, uh, to us here. We need. I think I they think weren't answered. Uh, the issue here is is these warrant articles that are uh, 
that are being put out that are leased for three years or five years or whatever, and the contracts don't have a non-appropriation clause, and therefore only 50% of the people it takes to pass them. Whereas if they had an appropriation clause, and the, and, the, and the lease agreements were spelled out in, in those contracts, a 60% approval rate would be necessary. That was the question. Where are we, where are we going on this philosophy? From what I hear of the selectmen, they're very comfortable, including the town manager, with, with going with what they have documented. And they clearly stated that the lease is for five years and it'll be so much each year or whatever. And uh, they put that out in a warrant article that passed last year. Subsequently, you've had some training from the New Hampshire Municipal Association, and some words with maybe DRA, uh, I don't know, that, that would indicate there's some fuzz there. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm at lost at this point to weigh in on this at this point. Mr. Walburn. Mr. Chairman, you have been very clear, along with the Vice Chairman, Mr. Pluff, on this issue, and, and I appreciate my colleague, Mr. Zanoy's comments. But this issue goes beyond uh, mind-boggling to me. We, we talked about why this was brought up. They, when we did the five-year lease years ago at the ladder truck, there was an escape clause in it. That's a key issue. The other issue is that back then, unlike now, from probably mid-90s, late-90s, so the budget's pretty much passed every year. It, so what happened was, after that first year, I think the ladder truck was 580 or whatever, 600,000. That 100,000 was put in the budget every year. It's never an issue. But I think what the chairman has pointed to, and based on what I find interesting, when it's convenient, we like DRA, but when it isn't, we don't. DRA has recommended, along with our long time, we've heard about a lot of experts in the schools, but we've got a guy over here, Mr. Pluff, for 50 years in this town has been our go-to man in public works and all these things that we've been doing. We want to have these vehicles. He asked to have it separated. I watched the same meeting. They talk about our meetings. I watched the selectors meeting. And I mean, there was some, there was some really, uh, I mean, it was like there was no interest in having any kumbaya so that we could propose it. So what's happened as a result, and just to clarify, Jerry, just came on. We never requested the town attorney to be here. We requested an opinion. And to, I absolutely agree. I, I'm probably stronger on it than Tim as far as refuse. I, I think it's an outright, outright just, I, I don't know. And so we're going to hear more about it going over the warrant articles tonight. But, I mean, you know, the goal is to get things passed. But you have to have based on information that we feel is important. So that, that's all I'm going to say. I don't, I don't think we got an answer on it. But No, the questions that were posed uh, weeks ago by email right. uh, is what we're talking about, right? whether they were answered or not. And now we have an answer which was we ref I refused to answer, and that's what it comes down that's to. Correct. Do you, have your, you want to speak, Regina? Yes, I want to say that DRA was a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, for my first term as selectman, listening to outside people tell us what's best for Hampton doesn't work. And the Board of Selectmen felt, and based on feedback I've felt, that all these warrant articles are really annoying people and they're just saying no because of the length of the ballot. Now, I know that at least, I think actually all of us right now, the biggest concern we all have right now, including myself, is transparency. Yes. And it needs to change. I was just at a um, coastal Hazardous Adaptation Team. Mm -hmm. It's going to be including a Board of Selectmen rep, Jay Diener, of course, Ray Ann, and it's pretty much going to be a team that's going to figure out how to uh, deal <coughs> with all these flooding issues that we have going on in this town. Well, when I was asked to be the Board of Selectmen rep, I was happy to do it, but then I immediately realized that we didn't have a zoning board rep on there. All right, just because boards don't regulate each other, doesn't mean they shouldn't be put on the same page all the time. This is a huge issue for Hampton. It's a huge issue for people I have known my whole life that don't know what to do in the houses they are living in. They don't know whether to sell. They don't know whether they can get a loan. They don't know whether they can get a grant. And it's awful. And it looks like that we're actually going to, I convinced the chat tonight to add a zoning board rep. 
so that we could all be on the same page on a continuous basis. Would That's you? what needs to happen. The miscommunication <laughs> is not just from, it's me too as a selectman. I find out things third party constantly. I don't necessarily think it might be anyone's fault. I think it's just that that's the way it's been done and that's the way people have let it to happen. And if it doesn't change, it's gonna really hurt the town. Well, I and I'm sorry, but I think Mark has not answered these specific questions, no. Right. But we had the discussion, which is what I was under the impression that you wanted to happen on Monday night. And Mark explained, and the town manager and the Board of Selectmen agreed. He is also offering that if you don't like his answer, that you can go and you can contact NHMA and ask these specific questions. He is not here right now, and this is what he prepared. And he, I emailed this to him earlier, and I just got it, and I didn't get back on my email till 6 o'clock tonight. That's why Tim didn't get it, because I worked all day, and then I went to a meeting, <clears throat> and then I went home, and I came here. That's what my life is, no, I, okay? So <laughs> transparency is the problem. I called you this morning, we, and it's because I felt like I didn't know information, okay? That needs to change. Okay. We'll All right, so that's what the problem is. Can I just add one more comment to your, uh, come to your rescue here? Here's the difference with why the chairman spoke about DRA. The NHMA is a political lobbyist, just like the school boards association is. We're not interested in that. The, the DRA, we look to for a numerous amount of things. That's the point. And Mark himself said, buddy, oh, there's like a difference between uh, NHMA. Well, DRA has their opinion. DRA says talk to, I mean, this is just ludicrous. So I agree with what you're saying. Good for the flooding, by the way, but go ahead. Well, uh, I, will, I will suggest this to you, Regina. I believe I sent, you asked, sent me via, uh, asked me a question via email a couple weeks ago uh, to specifically delineate the questions that I have for the selectman's attorney to answer. And I immediately sent you four questions. And that was, uh, what, two weeks ago, right? Something like that. So it wasn't like, you know, a last minute thing that we were doing here. Uh, it was been out there, was sent out to uh, the selectman's attorney uh, by you, forwarded, uh, some two weeks ago. So this is not a last-minute well, thing. Well, maybe kind of thing. it's my so I just wanted, I want, because I thought that you wanted something specific. So questions. I just wanted to get that on the record. And the reason why you, you, I presume the reason you asked me for specific questions was because you were going to have the specific questions addressed. But the specific questions were not addressed, and that's the only conclusion that I'm drawing here. And th that's all. I don't know why we're making big noise about it. As far as going to uh, an HMA, I actually, after I gave my report on what... DRA disclosed to me, I believe that was in the December 26th meeting, I think, um, I offered that maybe we should ask NHMA, and this committee seemed to be like, more or less, who cares what NHMA has to say. Right? I mean, that, right. was, that was the sense I got, so, yes. uh, and I, I kind of sort of understood it, and it's actually, you know, a little bit reflective here in Mark's refusal. And the point of topic that we've had on and off over the years but here he begins a sentence, as I represent the Board of Selectmen, who well, is the governing board of the town. I am not in a position to advise you on questions that are aimed at coming up with contradictory positions taken by that Board of Selectmen. So you can see clearly, as you had asked previously, David, who, who does he represent as an attorney? He represents the Board of Selectmen. He's quite clear in that statement there, isn't he? Yeah. So, Very clear. Right. And so why, why are we asking... He's saying it's not appropriate uh, for him to answer uh, because he represents the board of selectmen. So obviously we have no legal recourse in terms of getting uh, legal opinions from the selectman's attorney. It's, it's just a total dead end, no matter what the question is, really, right? And Brian is suggesting, with some credibility, I think, that given that the NHMA is the lobbying group of the board of selectmen, that that would be, you know, equally, uh, well, uh, questionable source for us getting legal opinion on. We did get a legal opinion uh, from uh, DRA, Thank you. which was quite informative, and uh, that's it, right? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything more to say on the matter. So, I mean, we've gotten it all we could get. There was asked to go to the town attorney or the selectman's attorney, and I did, and this is what we got, and that's, that's that. It. End of story. Right? Yep. 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, <clears throat> under other old business, uh, last night we had uh, from SAU 90, I don't keep me here any more than necessary, but we did not vote on Article 2, which was a union contract for um, SAU 90, because there were some questions, uh, which Nathan dutifully responded to very timely this afternoon. We all got a copy of that via email. We all had a chance to chew on it, digest it, and assimilate it into our collective thinking, right? So uh, are we ready for a motion on this? Uh, if we do a motion, I like discussion. Well, all right. I'll, I'll motion move. to recommend, please. I'll move. Thank you, Mr. Warburton, and seconded by Mr. Pluff. Oh, you changed oh, change a little round today. Got to be flexible on that. Well, let me just offer, and I, I think Jerry's had questions, but I need to make a comment. Um, the old adage is wait till somebody votes on an issue before you start throwing uh, arrows at people. I received no less than eight memos or whatever you want to call it last night, unbelievable scathing from people in this audience and people in the schools. Let me remind, because I know the administration doesn't seem nobody's either told or they don't want to hear it. And by the way, good evening, uh, Superintendent Murphy. I know you said hello to some people. But here's the problem that I have. For many years in this community, I was on every school edition committee. I supported every collective bargaining contract. I still support every collective body contract. I have supported additions. I have supported anything the schools have done. And a, a lesson to be learned, and I plan on voting for this tonight, by the way, as I always have. And a, and a message to people in the schools, especially because we're on to the schools tonight, I, I really am offended that people that have known me would think for once. And, and, the, and I had three texts that people said, how dare you vote against this last night? Did they watch the meeting? We didn't vote. All we did was ask, which has never been asked of the business administrator because it's just been flown by every year, is for more information, which I complimented Mr. Lenny tonight. I'm just really put out. I, I am voting for these. I think the public should vote for these. And by the way, not once have I ever said or anybody that the CESPA folks don't do a great job. So let's get off that horse. I'm very much in favor, and I didn't appreciate and I'm a big, I got thick skin, but I think the public needs to know I'm a fair guy, and I wholeheartedly endorse these contracts. But a little, a little reminder to people, don't be go, going throw stones before a vote's taking place. That's not how it usually works. So I wholeheartedly endorse these, and I plan on voting for them, as I always have. Thank you. Any other discussion on this article? Right, I, I have. Mr. Zanoy. Yeah. I got a spare copy of this from <laughs> Nate, because I love my morning coffee at all. Coffee at home, but. I looked it over uh, as carefully as I could in the and in this in this uh, CESPA business, what what uh, drove this? Was the contract coming to an end? Is that what it is? Because we're we're introducing we're introducing costs to the town. We're introducing a dental plan. We're introducing a health opt-out plan, which means costs to pay out. We're introducing paid holidays. We're introducing increased salaries and wages. On the screen. We're introducing steps to be uh, expanded, right? There's a four steps today. Four steps. Yes. And you're going, we're going to have eight steps or thereabouts. How many steps we're going to? We're going to keep four, Jerry. We're going to each year when we create a smaller step of 175, we're going to drop a step so that so we, have four we steps. keep four steps right along. But you can see those, like I said last night, those steps are just over 5%, each right. of them now. They're 90 cents, uh, uh, roughly, from 1542 to 1632 no, to 1723, et cetera. Um, but, but they were bigger steps as a result of the transition from 10 to 7 to 4. They're bigger steps than we wanted uh, to I, keep. I've looked at the steps. Yeah. They are a step, that, for instance, you know, they, by category, they vary a little bit. Because right. you have four categories. How many categories are you going to have here? The categories will stay the same. There'll still be the four. Four, because I, I, I see two two categories being spelled out. I didn't know if you dropped from four to two. But uh, but the difference, in the, the steps have got a five from step one to two currently, or well, at least what's in here. Currently, just, yes, sir. Between step one and two, there's a 5.8% increase. Between two and three, there's a 5.6% increase. 
between step three and four is 5.2 percent. Looking at the new proposals, uh, if what we're what we're doing is elevating now the steps by one and a half percent, I would presume. It's taking the 1.75 and you're elevating that. That none of those steps will change. So the current steps stay the same. There's no elevation. No elevation. The people at the top move to the next step, the That's new correct. one, which is 175. The people that are in the grid get whatever has already been there, and then we drop off the bottom so that we don't end up with eight steps at the end. We only end up with the same. So we're not adding one point. Uh, no, no compounding there. I mean, uh, we're, not, we're just taking every, what's here from a percentage step point of view. Correct. We're not adding that 1.75 to it, no. each step. No, because the steps of 90 cents, roughly, they were already f over 5%, so we didn't add anything to those steps. But on the new steps, you're saying? But the new steps will be 1.75 higher than the previous year. Why, why are we so driven to eliminate the lower step all the time? One of the conversations around the table was that... Don't we plan to bring on people in the future? We do, but one of the conversations was how much of a delta is there in skill set uh, based on one year of experience, two years, three, four, we started at the beginning of the previous contract with 10 steps and management came in with a conversation that we wondered out loud with the union, is there really a difference in the, in the benefit of experience in these roles between three years or five years or seven years and 10 years? And, and the agreement was no. And so we reduced it from 10 to seven and then to four because four seemed to be a, an agreed upon um, growth curve, if you will, learning curve. There, well, there, 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 there are new people, yeah. there are new people, but within two or three years, they have become accomplished at that function. So we didn't go, with, we didn't go without steps. I mean, that, that might have been part of the conversation, but we didn't end up without steps. We ended up with four, and so we didn't want to give up the four. Who established the steps in terms of the pay associated with each step? The uh, one, two, three, nine people sitting around the table in bargaining, CESPA and and board reps and, and, and administration. You know, I, I, I feel that that jobs should be evaluated by companies who do this for a living. Companies should weigh those positions, determine their complexity, hazards, if there's any hazards, weights that they lift, security issues, come up with point totals that, that reflect what that job should pay. And, and have a range, mid max, okay, or mid midpoint max. I don't believe people sitting around the table should be developing ranges. That's my opinion. I've said this before. I say it for the janitors. I say it for the food people. I say it for these people. It should be people who do it for a living. Evaluate the job that's being done. Determine its complexity. Its required skill set, any hazards, any toxic chemicals, any, anything. And they add points as they go along and then they total up the points and they determine what this job <coughs> should pay. Okay, thank you. And I think that, that that hasn't been done here or it hasn't been done in a couple of other places as well. And I think that puts us, this SAU 90 at the town at a disadvantage. When we start, we start talking about uh, paying 18 and 9, the average, I looked at the, uh, what you're paying here in this spreadsheet. Sure. The average wage is eight, more than it is $18.31. That's the eight. top of the scale, but the majority of them at this point have I moved mean, the to the top. 20, yes, sir. 23 of them out of the 30 <coughs> are at that top set. Yes. Are $18.31. Yes, sir. And, and uh, that's about 60, 60 plus percent of the, of the total. And I don't know, we're gravitating, we're, this, this river is swift, it's swiftly moving, and these costs are going to just continue to carry us. Every year we're going to be adding costs, and, and I see what you're adding in here. In year one, 1920, which is what this is, it's, it's 37246 By the way, where is that in the book, Nate? Is that in the front, summarized anywhere? In the budget book, no, because this is a the separate Warren article. It's Warren article number oh, two, and none article. of those costs are Sorry. included in the budget. Sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry. The baseline, the, the big, the, the, the legal size spreadsheet you've got, yeah. those costs 
That's, uh, what's that's in the budget. I mean, it's on multiple pages because there's some regular right. and special. Right, this is the way it is today. The, but that's consolidating it all on one right. on one total comp worksheet. That's the way it is now, and so that's. Most of these people are working six and a half hours a day. Or Most six, of them. Six, 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 seven, or six or six and three quarter. And how long do the teachers work? Nate? Seven. Seven. Well, I mean, they work. Try fifteen. Yeah, try. <laughs> <laughs> They're compensated. I mean, it's based on seven. When we submit to the retirement system, it's seven. seven but hours. yeah, but that's. Uh, and and part of motivation here was that were they complaining that they were here fifteen minutes longer than they should have been? We had a concern because at the academy. The day has grown longer over the over the life of the preceding contract because we just have a bell that's ringing earlier in the day and the kids are starting the day earlier. The ending hasn't really changed, but the beginning of the day has has uh, has advanced. And so, practically speaking, we had paras who were working a full day, but they weren't being compensated anywhere near it. So, um, I wish I had sat on this board. Well, we. We made adjustments to the food service uh, when we worked on Still it together, and we appreciate that. I, I, you know, well, so I mean, I mean oh, I'm on your board, school board. Oh, I thought you said that. school board in terms, because I was on the wage and salary for the teachers. But, yes, sir. Side up. And I think that one worked out quite well. It was yeah. a five-year pack, was it five years? Four. 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 So I'm, I'm really very uncomfortable, very, very uncomfortable with the bottom line here. We're adding costs to the town again. We're not freezing ourselves. We got. Are we bearing any debt yet from this new school? Yes, your debt yeah. service has been added to the budget. It was added in last year's budget. It's all in there. It's in there. So yes. we're paying appropriate debt now. Well, that's. <laughs> we're paying the debt full yeah. boat. Yes. Yeah. 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 Paying full the debt service. Yes. Yeah. 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 Correct. Twenty-five years. Right. Yes. Right. And uh, so I, I looked at it, and you know. I made an assumption when I was looking at it. I, so my math isn't correct here, but they were adding the one, the uh, the steps were elevating themselves by mm -hmm. one point. And I understand because seven frequently, percent. frequently, that's how the scale movement works. But yeah. in this case, we only moved the one seven five at the top because of the steps were already what they were. You also, Troy. Yes. Right. Anybody else? Questions, statements. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Frank. Mr. Sorry. I just want to clarify something for. Uh, Jerry, that we're looking at a 1.75% increase, which relates to a 31 cent in 31.7 cent increase per hour, two dollars and fourteen cents a week. The cost of living for Social Security today, effective January 1st, was 2.85. These people make less less than Social Security, all right? We're looking at an average salary on a six, we, we, we tried to basically equalize the day at Hampton Academy because we extended that time frame for core courses. We're looking at a base salary of, for the highest level of around 21, 22,000, yeah? We have people working, okay? that can make much more money elsewhere, all right? So I, I think we're beating this thing to death for a lousy $2 a week. Okay, thank you, Frank. Anything else? I make a motion that we have. Anybody else? We already else? the motion. Anybody else have any comments? Frank, I, I, I Frank you're not suggesting that. <coughs> I'm sorry? You're not suggesting that these people are being offered too little and we should vote no, are you? No. Okay. I think I was on the negotiations. I think that, you know, it was a win-win for us. I know that there's, you know, we're... No was a sufficient answer, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're all set and ready to vote, I'd right? I'd like to comment that, Frank, with overhead, that moves you up around 22, 23, 24 thousand a year, with overhead. All these benefits over here. FIS, work, unemployment, life, LTD, health, total benefits, are about 12% over their base wages. Thank you, Mr. Zanoy. Anybody else? Thank you, everybody. All those in favor of recommending uh, this more article, please raise your hands. That would be everybody except Jerry, who is voting. No. No. Got that, Barbara? So that's uh, one no, the rest affirmative. Thank you. So that would be a Thank seven, you for coming in. I didn't one. think we'd be needed, but I'm glad you did come in. 7-1. Let's vote.
Seven, Seven in favor, one opposed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Nancy. Okay. Uh, any other other old business? I do. Uh, Regina. Yes, this is old business. Uh, Attorney Durrell's response, I think there might have been confusion. Okay, because I was under the impression that I was asking him to recap what the board just did on Monday night. And I think the reason why he replied the way he did was because the Board of Selectmen had just made a decision on Monday night. But I can clarify that, but I can't do it right now. So I just want to say that it could be on me. Okay, so just let's put that out there for right now. Well, you know, I, certainly I am not, and I suspect this committee is not as well. What I'm interested in playing a blame game. We're just interested in getting facts. Well, I That's just, all. yeah, but if so it's something when, that the I The conversation was not directed toward figuring out who to blame, is all I'm suggesting, okay? So. Again, lack of transparency. Maybe you should just have direct, if you want to ask questions to council, I think maybe you should be allowed to during the budget process. So maybe that's something that can be reconfigured yeah, so next year. Yeah, call improvement then possibly for next year. I don't even have to year. get involved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. that might be better. Uh, we, we got as much as we're going to get, so I mean, we're, we're right. accepting but I just want to say that it could have been me. I could have been part of the problem, so. Okay, any other, other business? <laughs> other old business, I mean, great. So let's move on to the town's workshop, which we've all been looking forward to beginning. So let's begin it. Uh, first one up is the uh, East Pot Police purchased plow truck, which is on the monitor. For those who don't want to look at the printed one. We haven't discussed this one at all. Uh, we've been waiting for answers from uh, town attorney to our legal questions because it was understood from prior selectmen's meeting uh, statements were made that this lease is going to be treated <coughs> exactly like the lease on the trash trucks. And so we were waiting for an opinion on the trash truck second year lease appropriation so that we could discern better what this means. And now we've got whatever we got and we're going to have to work with whatever we got. So uh, with that, any questions, comments, whatever? Very difficult reading that. I mean, I'll tell it's you. Article 27. 27? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got it. Okay. It's a five year lease purchase yeah. agreement for a six uh, wheel Mack dump truck with plow, patrol wing, and stainless steel sander six. in the amount of $210,000. And to raise an appropriate sum of $42,010 to fund such lease purchase agreement in year one. Said lease purchase agreement shall contain a non appropriation clause, which you'll have to jump through hoops to exercise. Mr. Chambers. Yes, Mr. Bluff. This, this is a single unit to replace an existing plow, wig, and sander that's down there. Mm -hmm. uh, I could give you the number here, I think. Number 40. A 97 International, 4,900. Probably the town would not want to exercise the non appropriation part of this if they were going to keep this truck to plow snow with. I wouldn't think they'd want to buy it for one year or two years and turn it back in. This is somewhat different than the problem we face with the two trash trucks. This town is going to do trash today, and six months from now somebody might come up with something, or the, the uh, use of the dumping facility may change, something in the trash industry may explode, who knows, and we might not want to keep those trash trucks five years for some unforeseen reason. This dump truck, I think, is pretty much a standard use of equipment in the town, and I think that it probably will be like the ladder truck was, purchased, 
uh, pay the payments five years, town will own it and keep it. Mm -hmm. I would hope that they would service it and take care of it, and it would last. The other max we had that we bought in 88 and 89 lasted almost 30 years. I agree, Mike, that a trash truck and a plot truck are distinctly different things. That's right. Okay. But when we're saying they're, they're the same, we're talking about the... The lease. The actual contracts, the method of financing, they're exactly the same, mm -hmm. as has been right. described. Right, right. Most et cetera. Right. So um, we're not saying that the truck itself, either plow or trash, are equivalent to each other. No. No, no one's no. saying that. No. Right? Okay. But the clause in the lease, to escape, yeah. I don't think is critical to this, as it as it can be to the other two. You can still keep the clause in there; it doesn't make any difference. But well, if we treat it the way we're treating the trash trucks, right? It doesn't make any difference right. because there's no ready way for the voters to actually it's exercise the clause, is it? Right. So it might as not the clause may not might, might as well not even exist. Well, they're going to put it in there, right? So they well, like. there's a reason for doing that, yeah. obviously. Right. It's a 50% vote requirement. Right. Mr. Warburg. I'm going to go back to the same issue we brought up the other day. And I'm going to use my expression, the little faith in taxpayers, based on what the, the town has presented. Because, Mike, you just brought up at the end of your comments exactly what another issue is about this. We paid this money for years. And we have asked, I have asked, citizens have asked to, to hire, they should be hiring you to go in it. We see our vehicles that sit out there, they get ruined, they don't last, and, everything, and that's a concern <laughs> I have, and it's been going on a long time. And I, for one, I cannot understand for the life of me, and, and we said it the other night with the turnout gear, which we're all in favor of, and it's, an, it's a safety issue. But I'm sorry, to continue to use funds because there are people I know that may want to vote for this, but they don't like the fact that, okay, they've already paid taxes and we've got money. And fiscal impact uh, note, uh, this drawing down that, that's not, that is not the purpose of that fund. And I, I see too many of that in here. I, I'm just really torn because. Brian, I don't understand what fund you're There's no, for. there's no, uh, uh, which, right this, here. This is not 26. a. Uh, Right. Article 27. 27. Yeah. 27. I'm 27. talking about... Lease plow truck. You said 27. It's, 27. it's 27. Lease plow truck. 26. 26, Brian. 26. 26. Yeah. Right, but it was... on. I'm saying I've got a, I've got a sheet here from last one. Well, because <laughs> everything gets changed. But yeah, you understand that. Look at the screen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, forgive me I'm on that. You're but I, But I still have an issue with... I don't know, Mike. I, we just seem to be throwing all these things, and my concern is there's never a program for maintenance. That's what I have a problem with. That's all I'll say. Anybody else? Regina. Well, if we're still talking about the 71,000, Article 26, five-year lease purchase for max six-wheel dump truck with plow, patrol wing, and stainless steel sander in the amount of 210050 Right. to raise and appropriate the sum of $42,010 <coughs> to fund said lease purchase agreement in one in year one. Right. Said lease purchase agreement shall contain a non-appropriation clause. Okay? So, I mean, I don't understand. It's not like we're trying to hide anything. It's a five-year lease purchase agreement. Now, I know everyone's going to blast me because I'm saying NHMA, but NHMA says that this can be separate than... It would be as of. But why did we do it together? Wait a minute, wait a minute, let her finish. As a bond. Right, but can I just. Wait a minute. I don't know. Why do we let trucks sit down there? The DPW. No, no, no. Hold on a second. But we're trying wait. to fix wait. it now. Wait. Okay? What, what reference don't to, know why. What was the reference to bond that you made, Regina? You made a reference to a bond. The difference between this and a bond, you guys mm -hmm. keep bringing up the 50% and the 60%, because mm -hmm. it's distinguished. Oh, I see. And I don't understand how we're not being transparent. We're telling the voters right. it's five years. This is the fiscal note impact for year one, yep. and that is the total note yep. impact. Okay. So um, the reference is not simply to bonds. It's to any multi-year contract. The town meeting has the ability to appropriate money for the next year at 50%, with the exception of union contracts. Um, if they go beyond commitments beyond the next year, 
they need a 60% vote, like a bond as a commitment beyond one year, like a, a lease, a multi-year lease as a commitment beyond the, the next year. These require 60% votes. Unless you're raising a contract with a non-appropriation clause, then you only need a 50% vote. That's why we've got the non-appropriation clause in there, so we can pursue the 50% vote. The issue is not there. The issue is in subsequent year um, appropriations. When we have to appropriate the payment for the second year lease, like the trash trucks this year, the f cost for that was put in both the proposed budget and the default budget, leaving the voters with no ability to choose to not appropriate. And so the non-appropriation clause is uh, severely weakened, if not rendered totally useless. Mr. Walburn. Isn't this, help me out here, aren't we, couldn't we link, um, lump this whole five-year lease issue or what we've been talking about before with the other five-year lease issue? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I just think it's more than just the funny, it's the leasing part of it and the appropriations. I believe, and I'll just tell you my own, my own yeah. belief on this is that I believe the DRA is correct in their recommendation that you should yeah. have a separate appropriation for it. Yes. I believe the approach that the selectmen are presently taking is effectively an end run around the voters in the 60% rule. And uh, I, I basically consider it illegal. Um, and. Uh, since the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager in the previous Board of Selectmen meeting has said they're going to treat this lease for the purchase of the plow truck exactly the same as the trash truck lease, then all I'm interpreting is, okay, this is an act which I consider to be illegal again. And of course, I'm not going to vote in favor of supporting anything I perceive to be illegal. Now, we can't get a legal opinion from anybody other than DRA, and they're not lawyers, but, and they only can give advice, they can't do enforcement. And their advice was pretty much consistent with right. what I just said. And so we're stuck with, we can't go anywhere as a committee in terms of dealing with this, except in how we either recommend or don't recommend this particular warrant article, as well as treating the trash truck lease in the budget if we choose to do so. Did I cover it correctly? Uh, I think you did. Okay, Regina. Yes, I would argue that the Board of Selectmen received the legal inquiry from Town Council at the Board of Selectmen meeting on Monday night, who are five elected officials who all unanimously agreed that this was the way we were going to go about doing it, which happened to agree with the Town Manager and Town Council. Now, if you guys want to doubt those seven people and fight about it, go ahead. You know what? But this is the path we've chosen for the town. I think it's transparent. And I'm not going to give a legal opinion about it because I'm not a lawyer. But my board voted unanimously to go about doing it that way. Well, I'm not giving a legal opinion either other than simply stating that I have to decide whether or not the votes I cast are consistent with the duties of my office and the oaths that I take to that office, which of course requires me to be uh, in, in, uh, in harmony, at least, with uh, the existing laws. And that requires me to have some belief whether or not a particular action is in harmony with the laws. And I perceive this is not in harmony with laws. And so my vote will be on that basis. And that's all I'm saying on that point, Regina. It's clear. Anybody else? Can I understand? Mr. Zanoy. Yes, thank you. This six, max six-wheel dump truck with plow, that's going to be used for what? It's not obviously besides snow plowing, right? What's it, what's, what's it going to be used for, Frank? Anything public works needs it for. Hauling material, transporting things. Sand. That's what it's for. <laughs> sand for. It's got a sand around it. Jerry, you love sand, sand, don't you? You just sand. love sand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's replacing one that's already there that's right. in tough shape. Yeah. Do I understand? This is. This, uh, with a plow, that's going to be right out in the roads in, in the middle of our storms and. and and reacting to this, the road conditions accordingly. This is a, a good truck, according to Mike, Mac. So it's, a, it's kind of a universal use, Fred, would you say? Yes. Okay, okay. Fred, we'll anybody else? Do we have any more, Mike? 
I think we should buy it. <coughs> if, if you want to argue about the lease stuff, that's beyond me. They need the they need the truck to replace that international. The international is on its way out. Right, but to the chairman's point, are we going to get us back in the situation that we talked about this year with the other matter? With the other? I'm talking about with the with the other five-year lease that we've been. They're running the show. Let them worry about it. Uh, look. Okay. We we. Uh, are you all set, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Jerry. You know, if the RA is going to weekly recommend. I mean, they're not standing up. They're not being bold about it. <laughs> Come on. And uh, I don't know. I didn't sit in on your uh, your municipal association meeting uh, when they had two people here. I don't know if oh. they phrased it. Look, I read it. I understand it. I know what they're doing. Okay, I can read it. Now, <clears throat> are we illegal? I don't know. We don't have anything or anybody saying we are. Well, yeah, I just did. Okay, good. Certainly, DRA didn't say it, and uh, DRA cannot say it by law. Then why are we even asking them? Because it's the closest thing to official I could get. Uh, yeah, DRA right. did not give a weak advice; they gave clear advice. But it was only advice it was, it because was, they're only authorized by law to give advice. The word recommend, you know, Jerry. I recommend that you buy a brand new car this year. No, I don't want to buy a brand new car. <laughs> so, of course not. We know that. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, recommend means recommend. Right. And I recommend people don't right. don't encourage people to break the law. Uh, anybody else? Y'all ready to vote on this? Get it over Can with? Can somebody move it? I'll move. I'll move that we purchase this vehicle per, per Second. the Article 26. No, we did not. Move by Zanoy, seconded by Plough. That was when I was a little We're all set on the conversation, thank God. Yeah. Uh, all, all those in favor of uh, recommending, raise your hand. Okay, Mr. Everybody except me. <laughs> and I'm a no. Okay. <laughs> I was a no on the last vote. <laughs> I guess that balances, huh? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Right. So seven, seven yay, one nay. Now we have a new uh, Warren article for the uh, famous Mace Road. Which I'm sure. There is not. Oh, it's like the last new thing we have. Get the new packet. Article 50. I think it's at the end. It's on your screen. Oh, good. It's on the monitor. Oh, that's all right. I got it. Mr. LeBranch. Um, we, our secretary has a, a question about Article 18 that she, it says here that we didn't vote for it. Is that uh, gear for the firemen? Well, we and did vote for it. I vote thought for so, us. too. Wait a minute. We voted for everything. Uh, you can see it on the website. All right. Except for what we're voting on right now or working on right now. Yeah. That was unanimous. We, we have an administrative so. problem. We'll deal with it after the meeting's over, yeah. okay? Sorry. Sorry. Um, Article 50. Article 50, it's called. This is the Mace Road sidewalk. Oh. For it's $520,000. Did we deal with this last year or the year before? Last year. Last year. Last year. Yeah. Same number, I think. 520. This, this I'll make a motion to move this for discussion. I'll second it. I'd like to discuss it. Regina. Yes, this, this article was presented to the board on the on the 8th and I, I didn't realize it was coming and um, I enjoy the enthusiasm from these people because they are a younger group of people <coughs> this is getting them a way to be involved in the town but as I explained which I'd also later on will be asking the <coughs> committee to reconsider the article number in regards to the ADA sidewalks which I'll explain when we get to that but this Mace Road, I think, is probably one of the sidewalks when we get a plan put together that we should consider working on as soon as possible. Public Works currently has it in the plan for 2020. And the reason why it's in the plan for 2020 is because it was discussed 
at the budget committee last year that why isn't this in the plan? Why is this getting presented like this? Why is it in the public works plan? So it is in the public works plan. I don't know if you drive down Mace Road, but both sides is full of neighborhoods. And all those neighborhoods, the majority of them, they have kids in them. No, there's no sidewalks. There's no sidewalks. They can't get to the park. They can't get to the schools. So I think that town-wide, that probably is a good sidewalk to have in one of our upcoming projects. So I think I'm probably going to abstain from voting on this. I'm going to tell you that right now because I, it's a petition warrant article. So you know we did have the residents put it forth. But I really do think that these things need to be in the public works plan, especially when this type of money is involved. And it is. So I think that it's in the 2020 plan, so it's not too far away. And hopefully we can uh, go with what our capital improvement plan says we should be going with. Anybody else? Yeah, Tim. Jerry. Yeah, I mean, I, I've looked at that Mace Road and each side of it. We've got about eight or nine telephone poles that have to, would have to be moved somehow. you got stone walls and maybe two or three feet in from the road. That is one monstrous task to put a sidewalk in on uh, the southern side as you head west on Mace Road. I, I, I just don't know how much money that would take. Fred, do you have a, a, an estimate that you could feel 85% good on? $520,000 is what public work has to be. That sounds low. Same well, as last year, isn't it? Yeah, it's a half a million dollars. It was 500, it's it's it was 500 low. last year. No, he just confirmed it was 520. 520 last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hasn't okay. changed. Hmm. Right. The only construction project that hasn't changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Walburn. Well, I'm, I'm glad to talk about this article because my kids and about 30 other kids in that neighborhood across from Lock Road grew up there, but then we still have no sidewalks. And we took our kids across Lock Road, we held their hands, we went up to the park at Five Corners. Um, th this is another example of, you know, once again, here in my neighborhood and everything else. The other thing is, I don't know if it was the chairman or somebody I had a nice conversation with, has anybody uh, talked to any of the people on Mace Road that those that have those beautiful flowers up to the edge of the property and it's not theirs, it's the town, and that they're going to dig that all up and stuff? And as Jerry said, the, the poles and stuff. I, I, I think this is another example of, um, you know, getting going down a road. You also, should remember at that five corners, people wanted turnabouts. Yeah. yeah. That, that went, we, we threw that out. Yeah. And then they wanted lights and we threw that out. Uh, I, I think we got to take us. We got a lot more. Pri I think priorities. And by the way, I have families in my neighborhood with young kids that probably say, "Oh my God, we need no sidewalks." Well, I, we seem to survive pretty well. And, and when you look at uh, properties in this town, um, and I think it puts, quite frankly, when I look at town management, and public works, and others, with all the stuff we're asking him to do, with the 41 million right. that is coming forth in the treatment plan, with all this other stuff. We're now going to ask a warrant article, and, and I think Jen Hale, if I, if maybe I'm wrong, but I thought she even quoted a number higher than this last year after it was the, like saying it could even be 600 or so. Uh, but anyway, so. Well, I just want to speak on that. Because Hold on a second. Are you done, Brian? No, I just, so the, the point is um, this whole issue of sidewalks manifests itself in another whole discussion. But I, I really don't believe that um, this is something that, well, I'm definitely not interested. I'm not even sure if I'm interested in next year, but I'm, I'm done for the time. Virginia? I know the 520000 came last year because the petitioner went and sat down with Public Works. Yeah. And then I think maybe subsequent, Jen Hale might have said something like that, but this was just turned in as it was last year. So, I mean, there was no input no from Public Works. <clears throat> That's what I was told. I mean, I talked to the petitioner after I received it. And that's what she told me, that she dropped it off that morning, so. That's it? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. I believe if this is the one we were talking about last year, the 520, yeah. it ends up needing to require the six-foot disability sidewalk. And I think one of the things that was discussed 
when you end up putting that additional sidewalk out on one side and then on the, is this on two sides of though or just one side? Just one side. They're doing this one side for this amount. But right. the question was, it's going to extend into the street and cut somebody off at the other side. I, I thought, and yet the, the people here. No, they corrected that. Yeah. Right. They, they have enough room on the town right away to put it, to not affect the road. Well. But they do have to pull up, I guess, some stone walls or some trees. Oh God, there's monstrous trees yeah. in the park. Huge trees. But it's not going to affect the existing roadway. Okay, thank you. Now, is this advice, Jerry? Is this advisory or a man? No. You know, is this an advisory? Oh no, no. if it gets voted, no, it's it appropriate. Done. Private oh, okay. I'm against it. All right, I got a Mr. Bluff. If this, if this was passed this year, Fred, the, the money would be spent this year anyway. If it's in the 2020. Sidewalk plan. Well, this would this would overrule the plan. Right. Yeah. So so the construction would go on in nineteen if it was yeah. That's approved. Correct. There's no expiration on this for, on this money, so I assume it expires in March of next year, right? If it passes. It expires in December thirty first. December thirty first. So that means it's so they basically got nine months to yeah, do the project. Right. Did yeah. I think it'd be better sooner yes. next year. Uh, did. How did we arrive at this this figure, Fred? Did did we get people who put in? Last sidewalks? year, the petitioners went with to DPW and did detail work. And Regina reiterated, and what I understand from last year, the petitioners went to DPW. DPW came up with the five hundred twenty thousand dollars last year for last year's one article, which failed. Did we get a validation on that with an outside? No, we did not. With an outside no, firm in not. writing? No, we did not. And this year they put they did put the same Warren article out as they did last year. Nothing else was done, right? Okay, this little branch. Jury at the public hearing last year, at the uh, academy. Okay, I asked, where did this number come from? Just pull it out of the sky, and Chris Jacob, Jacobs got up, and he went and he explained it all. He he yes, he did. He explained it so much for this, so much for that. It isn't just a number that was pulled from the sky. He had, he went That's through good. the whole thing. Good. So I mean, it's yeah. not just a number pulled out of the sky. He went over it all. Stone he walls. Explained, he explained trees it. Trees that are 50 And that's years what old. it's going to cost. That's what he figured it's going to cost. That was a year ago. Yes. And there was no independent estimate or bid or anything right. like that, which was your original question. Anybody yeah, else? That's right. Would, uh, Anybody else wish to speak I on this? Mr. Frank. Question, how, uh, are we talking a mile, two miles? What are we talking about? A couple of miles. Bill, couple of miles? Bill, Bill Road to Five Corners. Right. Okay. Okay, I know Bill it. Bill Road. Bill Road to Five Corners. Oh, yeah, five okay. Corners on the south side. Hmm. On the south side. Yeah. Approximately how long is that? A couple of miles. Uh, no, I don't even think it's two miles. I don't. It's I probably think, not think, two think miles. Correct. It's two I miles think it's max. Under two miles. Yeah. Yeah. Mile and a half, maybe. Yeah. At most. Half mile, yeah. maybe. Uh, yeah. We'll be taking property by eminent domain, I'm sure. As well. no, no, we have enough no. room right no. on the right of way. Well, we, we were saying that, but I. Well. No, no, we got that from multiple sources. Yes, so. <coughs> right, Fred? No eminent domain. Right. This is another one, too, if you remember when we put that in. Maybe they'll have a sidewalk that goes around the tree. Okay. <laughs> Anything else on this? That's a good one. I have the observation that's very similar to Mr. Mora. This is a six foot wide sidewalk. Yeah. Why is it six foot wide, you may ask? Disability ADA. Because the ADA has said if you're going to build a new sidewalk, it has to be six foot wide, right, Fred? Five, five feet wide? So this is apparently a five foot wide sidewalk. Correct. Okay. So that's why it's so wide and possibly why it's costing so much. What are our other sidewalks, like a foot and a half? <laughs> Some of us have no sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them they are, yeah. So if we were doing like a foot and a half wide sidewalk, we wouldn't need to tear up trees and all that other stuff, because right. it would cost a lot less. Okay. okay. And this is all part of the, the major sidewalk <laughs> problem, um, which I guess we're going to get into subsequently. But I am, I am uh, not in favor of building uh, new sidewalks. As a general rule, because of that five foot requirement. Can I just have Mr. Walker? I'm going to come in, Regina, because here's the thing. I'm not for this this year, but I'm a big, I was a big believer in the capital improvements plan. 
I may be interested in revisiting it next year when it's plugged in. And that's in this board discussion, well, and it's a hang on, hang on, Brian. Yeah. It has been plugged in. That's actually what caused No, 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 I know that. What I'm saying is it's plugged in. I'm saying the selectmen would probably then put it forth as a, that's the point I'm making as part of a, what did you say the other night, a much larger issue with projects. So, right. yeah, I'm not for it as it is right now. Anybody else on this uh, one article? You all ready for a vote? Yes. All those who actually believe they want to recommend this, uh, raise, your, raise your hand. <laughs> Seeing none, uh, everyone opposed it, please raise your hand. That would be uh, everyone but Frank and Regina, and they are voting. Abstain. She's abstain. abstain. The, the two reps abstain. Six, zero, two. I just two. Don't, understand, don't understand the form. They send it. It's in. Six, yeah. zero, two. Okay, Frank. Zero, six, two. Six zero two. Yeah. Two abstain. No, it's no, zero, no, no, six, no. Two, zero right. six two. Nobody votes. Zero six two. I'm sorry. Right. So glad you're back, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Zero six two. <laughs> <laughs> My math tonight is done. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so now we're uh, to the uh, other exciting part of our evening, uh, folks. Articles modified by the board of selectmen, if any. My understanding is they modified none. I didn't modify one of mine. Okay. We reconsidered the ADA. Well, they asked for a reconsideration vote, the majority, and I reconsidered it because during the. Oh, you're talking about the sidewalk. The, uh, the regular ADA for the hundred thousand to start a capital. The sidewalk fund. Yeah. Yes, yeah. to start okay. a capital Got improvement it. fund. And actually, let me get to the one article. Article thirty. Article thirty. Yep. Thank you. So I had the Jen Hale discussion at the Board of Selectmen meeting, and then subsequently today after the flood meeting we had, I talked with her again about it, and I also shared similar concerns with what we just talked about with the Mace Road Warren article. And she reiterated again to me that although this money is not going to really be enough to accomplish anything, the fact that we have this capital reserve fund set, set up will help us in order to get grants for whatever road projects we decide to do. And I told her that my concern is with this fund being set up that I want to see the fund grow. The reason why we have appoint the Board of Selectmen as agents to expend from said fund <coughs> is because if there's a project that needs to get to this money related to roads that it is going to be easier for Public Works to come to the Board of Selectmen and ask for the money to be dispersed instead of having to wait until the following year to put it in another warrant article where the project will have to get delayed to finish the sidewalks. That's what the Deputy here <coughs> and I conversed about this afternoon. So I just wanted to relay that information to the Board. And I think that along with what Mr. Warburton just said, that these things are going to be a lot easier to, pro to approve if we can have a plan that we can see and we can follow. So if we set this up, if it gets approved by the voters, it's not going to really be much to do anything, but we'll, we will have the funds set up. And hopefully it will work similar to the way that the uh, road improvement fund works. Actually, when I said um, article modified deal by the board select, and I, I wasn't including them changing their recommendation. Um, so. Well, but I'm just okay trying to address concerns, that's all. Um, that's okay, because I will also entertain uh, at this time any desire to reconsider any warrant articles uh, that we've already, well, actually we've voted on all of them except the budget warrant article. So if there is a desire to reconsider any warrant article, please state it now. I thought there was a warrant article on the firemen, adding four firemen. Yeah, the so-called safer thing. Yeah, I thought that that was put off. And Final vote. No, we voted. I, I thought we voted. Well, I'd like to vote on that. What about Article 18? Or, or am I incorrect on that? What are we doing well, with this you, one? Frank, yeah, can we get the I thought I asked that we consider this one for the budget. Well, you, you didn't. You just explained that we Well, could changed. we? I, would, I have a request to reconsider several, actually, based on information I obtained earlier today. So. Oh, I just saw a 000 across 18. That's why I just brought it up. Oh, but would. 
So you want to, so you want to, is there any objection to uh, Regina's desire to reconsider the sidewalk uh, capital reserve <laughs> fund? I see no objection. No, out of fairness to the selectmen, I, I, think I don't have a problem to consider it, but I'll make mm -hmm. some comments. Again. So I, we are now reconsidering the uh, sidewalk uh, capital reserve fund warrant article, <laughs> formerly known as 31. Yeah, which is now 30. Yep. Yeah. Whatever it is now. Well, no, I know. I just. Mr. LeBranch. Um, what I'm seeing on the on the thing up there, Tim, it says recommended by the Board of Selectmen 211, and the handout that Christy gave. Yeah, they tonight, changed that vote Monday night. To 401. Right. Okay, so that's the yeah. discrepancy. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mr. Weber. I'm going to comment. I'm going to use a baseball term. Regina is close to third base, but here's the only issue I have with what you're saying. The last two minutes ago, and well, no, could fall on my truck because it's what somebody brought up Monday night about money. The 520,000 for a mile-long sidewalk, and they're asking 500,000 dollars. We're at, you're asking us to reconsider on something that to add 100,000 to a capital reserve fund. That's going to buy us nothing. It would take us years to even be able to, re never mind, build new ones, repair. I, I like Jen Hale's concept, but this is it goes almost against what we said in the prior article. Is that, I mean, we're talking five hundred twenty thousand to do a mile-long sidewalk on one side of the road. I almost think you know we, we just go back to have like we used to have sidewalk money in the budget. I mean, this is I think a hundred thousand to put in a capital reserve fund. How many years that's going to take? We have millions of dollars worth of sidewalks. Okay. But if we have the reserve fund set up, then we can start planning for what we need to put in it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I know that the hundred thousand dollars really isn't going to get us anywhere, except that it will start the fund up. But remember, we we those of us who were in favor of the road improvement, Mike and I, three hundred thousand. It took us five years to get what we needed. I'm just saying, and that was a critical number because we needed actually six years to get the uh, eighty twenty. But <coughs> I, I just, I, I don't think, and the, here it is, I, I just don't think it's something that's going to be, just to throw 100000 into a fund, I, I, it's going to take a long time for that. But anyway, okay. that's all. Anybody else that? Uh, yeah, I don't have anything. Anybody else want to comment <coughs> for the first time on this? No. Nope. Mr. LeBranch. The road improvement fund that we put 300000 into every year, and then when they actually have something they want to do, then they have a warrant article, and then the voters vote to spend the money that's in the, in the fund. Is that correct? I believe the Road Improvement Fund, the Board of Selectmen, are the, uh, are they the agents? agents, is that correct? No, they're not. They're not. Tom Meeting is. Tom Meeting that's is. That's what okay. I thought. Then you're correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, like, I like that, okay? The, I have a little bit of a problem <clears throat> with this particular one. I don't mind putting money into a fund, but when it comes to spending it, I'd like to be able to vote on what they decide they're going to use it for. Mm -hmm. So if they decide to do a mile of Mace Road or two miles or whatever it is, I want to be able to vote on that. Mm -hmm. I understand that you know this can be built up for five years, six years, and have enough money to do it. But I want to be able to vote, just like we do with the <coughs> road, just like we do with the road fund. That's the only thing I have that's a problem with it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else Here's wish to speak for the first time oh, on for this? The first time, I'm sorry. I said one quick. Point. I I have. Oh, I'm sorry. You 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 just right. haven't spoken yet? No, I haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. go ahead. No, I really like the, the idea of a, a sidewalk capital reserve fund. A until I started digging into the details on this one, which caused me to have to be uh, opposed to it. Um, one, as Steve just said about the uh, the agent thing, I don't see the justification in having <coughs> to disperse money um, intra year. Why I can't wait for town meeting? I just don't see a valid example of that. Um, the thing that really set me off, though, is when I was looking at um, DPW's CIP plan, they had Mace Road in there for 2020, I think it was, to be done. That really set me off. 
especially given that I was getting people in my ear telling me it's just another slash find blah blah blah, blah kind of thing, you know, that kind of noise. And I was kind of pushing that kind of thinking to the side. But when I saw the Mace Road Fund, uh, the Mace Road Project, I thought, how the hell did that get in there? We just the voters just right. rejected doing it, and now suddenly because we're going to put it in the CIP plan, it's somehow now sacrosanct. I, I see it the other way around. If the voters said yes on it, then it became sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see that as you know some sort of uh, situation that is very undesirable and probably will repeat itself over time. Also, um, the sidewalk reserve fund here includes building new ones. And I think that definitely, if you're going to put in a new sidewalk or even a new road that we're going to build, <laughs> town meeting ought to be voting on that one. Mm -hmm. Now, it may be that there are, there are developments in which the developer develops the sidewalk and then gives them to the town, but then it becomes a maintenance slash repair thing. <coughs> and I don't really have a problem with a sidewalk fund that is just dedicated to maintenance and repair and replace even. But not for building new, because that would like take it away from the voters to decide uh, on that. Uh, I know there are people, as there are from time to time, who will complain about the number of warrant articles on our ballot, and it's perplexing to me that people who have held office for a number of years aren't able to point out when they're asked the question, "Why do we have to have so many damn warrant articles?" But the correct answer is because we have so much damn democracy. <laughs> if you don't have the ability to vote on issues, all you have to do is the ability to vote on people running for office based on what? Personalities and all that good stuff. Uh, you don't get an opportunity to vote on issues. That's what town meeting is all about. You want to take away that democracy? But we're experts. That's why we get. That's what you do when you take away Warren articles. You're taking away that democracy. So, Jerry has this. Go ahead, Jerry. My only point is that I like to see it like Steve, a Warren article written, specifying the streets and the roads that will be done, unless a contingency arises that can be explained at the next session, and then the money it's going to take, and you ask the people to vote for it. That's what I like to see. That goes for roads too. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. We, uh, Brian. Did you go ahead, Mike? You well, I, I was just going to say maybe this should come back next year, rewritten. Huh. Yeah, uh, absolutely. To mimic the capital improvement program for the road fund, so that the people can vote to put the money in there, and then they can vote as to what it's going to be spent on, rather than build up a fund, and then. Right. I have some project that gets approved and cleans it out. Well, that's You'll why never I don't, get anywhere. I don't with get this concept of building up the fund. Right now, right. you've got $100,000 going in the fund, and if you look at DPW CIP for next year, they got $100,000 for sidewalks. They got spent six hundred. So I don't. See, where's the buildup? I don't see it. It's yeah, like yeah, it put it there. in, take it out. Yeah, right. Isn't there? Brian, I just had. Um, so glad you brought that up. I ask you a question, Mr. Welch, in reference to what Mr. LeBranch said. You know, for many years we did put $300,000 in that capital reserve fund, but then there were lean years yeah. where we didn't put as much or nothing. Is that correct, Fred? We took out, probably. I think all the years I've been here, we put money in every year. But you didn't put 300000 though. Yeah, we did. You did? Yeah. Started at three fifty. Yeah, it was pretty uniform. But we had three fifty. dollars at The reason I say that, because boards change, and, and right. to your point, and the other comment I'm going to make, and I agree with so wholeheartedly, Mr. Plupp, uh, Selectman Woolsey is, I think, on the right track with this chart, you know, developers developing sidewalks and stuff. But let's all remember McDonald's uptown. Yeah. They never finished that, right, Mike? The uh, uh, South Side Anne's, Anne's, Anne's Lane, Lane that was never done and the promises that were made. Yeah. So I think, based on Stephen and everybody's input, I almost think this needs to wait the next year, too. I think we've got to put some more thought in this. Well, we did ask uh, the selectmen to reconsider on a number of points on this. Yes. And they chose not to. Right. Uh, now the selectmen's representative have <laughs> asked us to reconsider. Yep. And we yeah. are reconsidering. Right. And uh, I assume we're done with the reconsideration, and now we want to vote. Yes, fair. Right. Okay. All those, or 
who actually favor this, raise your hand, please. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Yes. So yeah, a motion uh, to recommend by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Jerry. Regina Jerry. Barnes. No, no, it was Jerry. Thank you, no, Steve. Oh. No, I pulled my remember. I was confused. I'd love to be seconded. Mary Louise. Oh, I'd love to second it. <laughs> Are we administrative okay now? <coughs> That's it. All right. So we've got the we got the yeas. We do? Yeah. 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 Zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Zero. Zero. Easy count. Oh, okay. Uh, and now all those in opposed to recommending this, raise your hand. Uh, that would be everyone. That would be everyone. So zero at eight, eight. So you can tell your board we were happy to oblige their desire for zero us to reconsider. Zero eight, zero. And it actually cleaned up our vote. No, Regina, what did you, you vote? I voted with the committee. Yes, she did, yeah. Okay, eight, it is eight. Was that like a surprise? A little back and forth on that one, but. <laughs> now I'm done. <laughs> so it's zero uh, eight, right? Yeah, Regina Butler, she's fair. She knows what. No, I want to record it in our wonderful database. <sighs> there we go. Anything else to be reconsidered? Uh, you already had one. All right. All right. We'll get back to you. Oh, she has no. Mr. Frank, you had one. You want to no, no, I, All right. I got a clarification. Okay. I, it was zero 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 and it should Mr. Been Zanoy, eight, you zero, had one you I had a fire one. I, I thought fire safer grant. Yeah, what, what was eight zero zero? I don't know what number that is, eighteen. It was, uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll find it. Doesn't doesn't matter. We'll find no, it. No, it just got, wasn't filled. It wasn't filled. Right, right. Just, uh, uh, right. On the screen. Right, to Stephen's yeah. point, we yeah. voted. Frank right. wrote down eight zero zero. We voted. To it's on the screen. The votes are on the screen. No, I know, but on the, the Christie's new sheet, it, it says zero zero zero. zero, zero. It says zero 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 there too. Oh, yeah. No. On the screen in the middle on the right. It says zero zero zero. On oh, the on screen the, in the on the right in yeah. the middle. See so right here. Over. You'll yeah. see we voted twice. Right. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it's eight zero. No, I don't. We, it was five zero three the last time we voted. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it wasn't eight zero. Yeah. Eight people here. It was five zero three the last time we voted. Yes. On on this side. We voted on January third. No, no, no. Five zero three was for the four firefighters, not the turn up yet. Right. No, no, no. That's what this we're talking about. The safer grant. Right. Um, article, which is Article nineteen, Brian, on the new hand. Hey, there we go. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. You said Article eighteen. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I'm sorry. Five zero three. I apologize. Three. It's just that never no. mentioned the Frank. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Five. I was talking about eighteen. Right. And they're talking. I know. But they're talking about nineteen. Nineteen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Five zero three mm -hmm. is after right because Mr. Yes. LeBranch, Mr. Jones, yeah. and I abstained. Thank right. you. Yep. Right. Finally, who so wants to revisit that? Mr. Yeah. Zanoy wants to reconsider it. Is there any objections to reconsidering no. the safer grant? Great. Yeah, to me, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes. Okay. please. To me, this, you know, is um, to me like a bait and switch. Yeah. For three years, we're going to get a discount, but when those three years are over, this the operation budget will be up by a half a million dollars at least with this one stroke. You pay your base pay, your overtime, your benefits. At least easy on a quarter apiece, four guys. This is going to elevate the operations budget easy in the fourth year by almost a half a million dollars, if not more. I, I don't like these grants that come in and take care of you in year one and two right. and three. They make everybody feel warm and fuzzy. But then here comes year four. Hampton is an ongoing concern. It's going to be here a thousand years from now. Forget the first three years. Do we need four firemen now? Because you're going to be paying for them full boat in the fourth year. I'm strongly against this. Okay. Anybody else before we vote again on this one? I just, for clarification, Mr. Frank. I, I thought when we discussed this the last <coughs> time, and please chime in, tell me I'm wrong or whatever, I thought the reason that they wanted it was because the town is increasing in size, number of people, and the, and the ratio of firemen to cover that. They were looking at doing this, but they're <coughs> utilizing a grant to do this, and EMTs as well, because right now, 
if somebody has a heart attack and our EMT squad is out, we have to go to Seabrook. We got to go to Northampton because we have a uh, mutual aid. No, all the firefighters are EMTs. Right. No, no, he said that. He yeah. said that. But I'm saying the ambulance itself. But, you know, if everybody's out, whatever. So uh, that's what I thought yeah, that this th thing was. Yeah, just th for clarification. This does not purposes. buy another ambulance. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Ms. Bond, sorry. Yes. Um, actually, I just had a, the fire chief actually talked on this last night at the Hampton Beach Village District. And I will try to reiterate it. I've heard it enough times. This will staff them at 10 and they'll run down to nine, whereas right now they're staffed at nine and they run down to eight. So they need five people to run an ambulance and a fire engine. We have three ambulances right now, we can only use one. Because at the beach, we staff engine four. And it takes three to staff the truck and two to staff an ambulance. So if we have five, we could easily have an ambulance and a truck both down at the beach and in town which has been an ongoing concern for as long as we haven't had an ambulance down the beach full time like we used to. And also the increase in calls is not necessarily related to fire, but is, you know, 911 EMT related issues. We have a new nursing home going up down on well, out on 27. Oh, yeah. no, yeah. it's already built and open. Right. Alzheimer's. Yeah, it's open. Yes. Yeah. And there I know they're down at the ocean side all the time. And you know, people are more elderly and more things happen and when they don't know what to do or they don't feel right, they call. So I think, yes, it's gonna be a huge increase in the budget. I agree with you, Jerry, that we don't wanna be deceiving with the grant, but at the same time, if we can take an advantage of a grant for three years, shouldn't we do it? Three years out of a thousand? Well, how long are we going to be in business? I'd like to comment on both Frank. But and there's still. Hold on a second. Wait. You all set? No, okay. because we have the same amount of fire people on that we have for decades. And we have, I don't know what the number is, but it's like thousand something or two thousand something square feet. I don't know, Fred, do you know he always talks about it? The, you mean the, uh, yeah, sorry. the development. The added development that we've had, these buildings, even though they're oh, more fireproof. The 1.1 million square feet? Yes. It takes Most five. Most of which it are takes, high rises under spray yeah, it takes Sometimes it oh. takes 10 people to get up to the top of these buildings with the, you know, to put a fire out or if they have to go into the hallways <coughs> and they got to run up with hoses or they got to run up and find people. The fire chief is the <coughs> one that, you know, has explained this and I think he's explained it at the budget committee and if you want to watch it again, he did it at the village district last night. And I think that this is investment in the town that we haven't done so well. And I think that we need to do it for our fire department. Well, you know, uh, he did speak about the 1.1 million and, uh, and he did acknowledge in a discussion, I believe that the high rises are, since they're under sprinkler system are not uh, an added uh, risk factor uh, in terms for of fire. fires. In terms of fire, yeah. Yes. yeah. But you still need somebody to But also, them. Frank, I'm sure you remember, uh, Mr. LeBranch made a point about the um, existing firefighters, uh, some of which no doubt have a economic need to continue their overtime, which they may not be able to do if there are more firefighters being staffed. Right? Yeah. And I personally am also not convinced uh, that, that, that the that we need the additional manpower, um, that you know, something disastrous is gonna happen if we don't add the manpower. I mean, why didn't we add this manpower last year? Well, we didn't need it last year. Why do we suddenly need it this year? Well, coincidental that a grant shows up. Uh, it's just coincidental, I'm told. Well, it's qu coincidental that I don't see the need as well, so. Um, I, I won't. I will be changing my abstention on this vote to a to a nay, Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, we got fifteen thousand people in the town. In the last two censuses, we're not growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're turning into a paramedic service, as opposed to a fire department. Right. Coming out of the business world, why not offload it? Offload it into a commercial ambulance <laughs> setup. Check that out, Jerry. I'll give you two months. 
Okay. Cab the, the company was building cables and harnesses. Jerry, find six suppliers. I'll give you a year. He'll do it too. Okay. Let's stay on the water. So, I'm, I'm not. I, we always think about adding. We always think about plow, just plowing money out there. Let's give me two of these and three of these and two trucks. And I need the four guys over here. And more policemen for the schools and so on. You would have to bring that All up. of that's going up, driving us up. I'll be paying 10000 a year very shortly in my house, very shortly. Thank you, Jerry. That's what, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> oh, no, I meant thank you for the tax payment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what I was saying. No. So I don't know about these paramedic runs. Yeah. I don't know how many cars they're making. I don't know for what reasons, but I do know this. Periodically, he shows up at the Board of Selectmen and he says, I got these bad debts on my account here. I'd like to have you absolve them at Selectmen. I'm carrying them for two or three years now. Other boards never took care of it the right way. How much is it? 300000 200000 These people never paid the bills. But we absorb the cost as taxpayers, okay? That happens about every two or three years. I was on the board when that happened either once or twice, and I've heard it come in subsequent to that when I haven't been on the board. It's a cost of doing business that's hidden. Have they asked you to absolve that debt yet? They're going to be shortly. <laughs> I can't handle these. I'm carrying it on the books. I don't know any books. I mean, he's carrying it probably his revolving account because these are bills that aren't being paid. He's chased them down, and he can't get anybody to respond and phone calls. So, you know, I don't know about this ambulance service. I like it. We get excellent service. Excellent. Top notch. A plus. I've used them myself. I broke my arm in the beach on these rocks down there. You didn't walk on the wall, did you? <laughs> the wall's another story. <laughs> so, uh, and my did wife... Did you build that wall? <laughs> so, so... I'm not, I'm not really, to just plus four firemen last year, to this year, plus four firemen, we got a grant, the first three years, look at this, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you this, and we're going to give you that. The fourth year, you get full blow. <laughs> Operations budget up a half a million. No, I, I, I've got to hear more, and besides, maybe this is a thing that should be talked about in the master plan. Who are we? What are we? What do we want to develop into? Do we want to develop it with purely a paramedic? We're not going to have big fires in this town, except if the beach goes up, then we'll have to get mutual aid in a hurry, especially if the wind is blowing north-south. But you know, who are we? What are we? What do we want to be? Maybe there's a, there's a good reason for a master plan. I think there is a good reason for a well, master plan. Well, different topic. Yeah. That's another topic. And, 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 uh, not here. You haven't got the grant yet, Jerry. <laughs> so that's my feelings on the article. Mr. LeBranch. You just said something that made me remember last night. I asked the both chiefs that they were at the village district meeting whether the federal government's shutdown is affecting them in any way. And this very thing, the fire chief said, oh, yes. The, the police chief said not yet. They're not feeling it yet, even though agencies that they work with, police department, um, FBI and other, you know, Secret Service, and I think he named one other one. But the fire department said, yes, they are. And specifically, this, this grant, because, right, because they were discussing it, but they're not discussing it now, and right? FEMA is part, the people that work at FEMA, I think it's related to, yeah. So yeah, so that's, yeah. it's not, it's going to be pushed off down the, who months away? It was months, months. Well, don't say though. They don't get the grant. They don't do it. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. So what you're saying is it may not be there anyway. So this is an opportunity for the board of selectmen to reduce the warrant article, right? Okay. I'm just telling you what he just Mr. Wobbert. Well, let, let, I'm going to go here. I'm going to point to both here. Great comments, and and I have to say Jerry is right on about the grant thing. And it was funny, Stephen. I was going to bring it up too. You know. I asked, and for Jerry's benefit, I asked the chief what his major needs, and you all heard me ask him, and we all pushed for the turnout gear because that's going to work. He needed that. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have a discussion? You're absolutely on the right page, the same page as I am. And by the way, for the viewers at home, my nephew's a firefighter in Manchester. My whole family's a cops, police, and teachers, so everybody needs to know that up front, and you know, <laughs> I take this very seriously. However, the bottom line is, I said to the chief, one thing at a time, and if we need to have additional resources, 
have a, dis a year long discussion with a cost analysis. Yeah. And, it, and Stephen brought up a good point. Are we going to save, in the last meeting, are we going to save money in overtime? That, he couldn't even answer. He couldn't even tell us what the 2017 overtime was. <coughs> I, I think there's a lot of other issues here. Um, one of the selectmen, not Regina, said something about, well, we, have, we, we want four and we're going to put four more. And I'm like, I, I just think we got to take a step back and, and understand that I asked a question about the majority, what they do. And there's no question the, the uh, paramedics, we got the best. That's what they do all across the state. You're, you've got to do that to be trained. But I don't buy the argument that if our population goes 15,000 to 20, uh, you know, to Dave Morris analysis, Libby Mutual, that means we add 10 more, and then two years later we add 20 more. I think we need, we've, at, we've done enough for the fire department this year, and, and I appreciate what they do. I appreciate we're going to give them that turnout here, which is $200,000, and I'm going to be a big, big supporter of that. That's safety. But just to throw out and say, well, it's Grant, Jerry's point, I'm against the grant, especially. I recommended that they put it out in a, in a straight warrant article. If the voters really want four new firefighters with full benefits, do the cost and let the voters decide. Let's not play this game. If they get the grant money, if they do, we're stuck with the whole thing and there's no say. So I'm not changing. I, I, the reason I abstained, and I'm probably still going to abstain, is because this is a very, I think there needs to be more discussion on this, You know whether it's needed or not. And it may be, but I think it's not the time this year. So suffice it to say that you're firmly on the fence? <laughs> well, yeah. no, no, wait a minute. We didn't use that the last time. Mr. LeBranch, you and I said, what was your terminology you said? <laughs> no, no, but I, might, I have a recorded vote for that, remember? Because I said it's, it's, it's a tough uh, thing, but I want to talk about it more. I don't want to say I'm totally against it in the future, but yes, so I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Walker. <laughs> just to note, the article will be null and void if the federal funding is not approved. Well, we received, understand so. that. Yeah. I just uh, don't that, like that. That is in there. The just, just for full disclosure, in case someone might be confused yeah. on that point. Uh, anybody else wish to speak to this uh, article, which you may or may not want to vote on? Uh, or recommend, I mean? Okay, let us uh, do it. Uh, who is making the motion to recommend? Mr. Frank is making the motion to recommend. Who is seconding? Ms. Barnes. Uh, two reps are making the motion. Okay, all those in favor of recommending this Warren article, please raise your hand. That would be Ms. Barnes and Mr. Frank. All those opposed to recommending this, please raise your hand. Mr. Zanoy, and Mr. Mora, Mr. Clough, and Jones, that's four. And Warburton is firmly on the fence. Well, no, you're, are you standing? No, Steve and I are Well, I wasn't suggesting you were alone. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so it was 242, two, is that right, Stephen? Yes, 242. Two. Yeah, because I think that it's too much involved with that article just to shut it off. But anyway, two, I... 242. Two. We're not shutting it off, Brian. We're just no, no, I understand. It's now recorded. We're just making it so be it. Yeah. You have another one, Miss uh, Regina Bass. I would like to ask the committee if they would consider Article 11 for the master plan. Jason, that's his name. Uh, yeah. Article what again? It's article master one. plan. Do you, any objection to reconsidering the master plan? That's one I really didn't want to reconsider. That's one I fairness. really don't want to reconsider either. Oh, but out of fairness, and this is what being the collegiality of records like okay, we, we, we talked about this on we, we were just, right. November 26th for 15 and a half minutes. Yeah. We talked on it again on uh, January 3rd for, for 20. 26 and three quarter minutes. Right. Well, I was just saying. Board of Selectmen, on the on contrary, spoke on this article on December 17th for a total of 59 seconds. And uh, they spoke again uh, Monday night, the 7th, for a total of 6 minutes and 43 seconds. So it is clear, based on that alone, we have spent more than twice the amount of time discussing this than the Board of Selectmen has. That's correct. And that may be why we're not real thrilled about doing it again. Well, Go ahead, Regina, make your case. Why I'm asking for reconsideration is because I attended a team that we've established in town working with DES and uh, Jay Diener, Rayan, Ray myself, Nancy Stiles, Bob Ladd. We are going to be having a zoning rep, and we also have the town planner and Mark Olson from the planning board on it, and it's to address all these different flooding issues we have going on all throughout town to do a better assessment, uh, to possibly work on getting some grants. So, and Jason brought up tonight at the meeting that 
this would also be a chapter if we were to uh, move to work on the master plan, which would just go in conjunction with everything we're talking about. I mean, I really think that getting a master plan into a working document needs to get done. I don't see Jason Bashan as our town planner letting it sit on a shelf. He's hoping that it will be a document that all boards can use to determine what should and shouldn't be done. So I just wanted to add the additional information that I received at my three o'clock meeting and how this working with this team and all other state agencies and things like that, we're hoping to have some speakers come in and you know get the residents involved at some point. And this would be an additional thing that would get added on to our master plan because it's it's really affecting a lot of people in the town, not just down the main beach, but really all over town. I mean, it's floody or it's swampy everywhere, and something that really needs to be done about it. Mr. Warburton. I'm going to compliment you again, because one of the things that have stuck in my mind, and why most of us were against this, and, and I've seen it when I've been on boards, these master plans are fine if it's in your favor. If it isn't, it isn't. And you go before these develop these developers come for the planning zoning. The other thing I would add, long after I was gone on selectman, Mr. Bashan works for the planning board, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, those guys could change too and have a whole new direction. I've seen too many plans in this town, and I think the, we need to have. What's that word? What do we do uptown on the main? What's that? I can never get that word. What Good we, stuff. What is it? Good stuff. No, what's the <laughs> thing they call charrette? Oh, a charrette. We've yeah. got charrettes, we've got meetings and plans. I, I've been through this stuff. I I was on the Rockland Planning Commission, went through all this stuff. It just, it does sit on the shelf, unfortunately. And boards come and go. I think there needs to be more discussion about all kinds of things, including what you're talking I love the flooding uh, issue you're addressing. But I haven't changed my tune on this because I've seen it happen. I'm absolutely in agreement with Chairman Jones and what he said about this. Um, it. <laughs> We put it in, and believe me, the, the lawyers and the developers and the boards all find it when it's in their favor. Then it's not. We don't care about the master plan. So that's all I have. This, this is a plan. Right. To fund a plan. To create a plan. To create a plan. That will ultimately produce a plan. Right. And when I asked Jason what he would guess the cost to be actually producing the real plan, yeah. he didn't know. Right. He had no idea. I asked him if it would be six figures, and he said he didn't know. But you know, Brian, you were around when we did the beach master plan. Correct. And wasn't that like over 200000 or 300000 uh, It kept creeping like up, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So it was well into the six figures. So we, we're we voting on this 18000 like it's nothing. But really what's going to happen is you're going to vote for That's this. That's correct. And then a year or two or three down the road, they're going right. to come back and say, we need $300,000 to complete the, the, the mm. plan. And if you don't give it to us, you just wasted $18,000 a couple of years ago by having us do this work. So I see this more as a more than eighteen thousand dollar kind of a thinking process to be applied here. So we just now, if you look at please, if you if you look at the actual warrant article, I have highlighted what the work is supposed to be. Stay in the past. What the work is supposed to be, if we actually give them the eighteen thousand dollars to do this, we're going to establish and facilitate a master plan steering committee. Yeah. I wonder how much it costs to establish and facilitate a master plan steering committee. Well, I'm pretty sure that members of the zoning board want to be on that, so I don't think it's going to cost us much. Right. Facilitating facilitating inter-municipal coordination. I don't know why that would cost anything. Initiating a visioning process resulting in a draft vision chapter. I mean, do not we have staff already to write that? Well, uh, that's what I was going to say. And preparing a uh, master plan template. Well, isn't the RPC already providing uh, or has offered to provide said template? Uh, so I really don't get what the, what this is going to produce. It's going to produce allegedly a plan to create a plan, but what do you need the eighteen thousand dollars for? That's not clear. Uh, to me, I don't see any cost items in there. Right. Uh, you have any consequence that couldn't be done with existing uh, resources? Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, I, I've listened to Jason, and you know. If I had a master plan with a big thick book, I would I wouldn't just bring it in and wave it in front of my boss. I'd say, look, I've been through this thing page by page. We're way off base with this book for a master plan. Well, let me give you some. I'll give you 20 examples while this master plan is completely obsolete, right. and that we ought to change it. I would convince him that I'd be right. Okay. I. I don't know 
what's in that master plan. I know some good people worked on it. Whether he's been through that book and actually has looked at it chapter by chapter and come, come away with a strong sediment, I don't know that. He didn't sell me on that. I've heard a couple of the presentations a couple of times. So I agree with, with Tim, with what Tim said and Brian as well. Uh, I, I, at this point in time, I plead no on this. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. Anyone else want to speak to this? Great. Uh, is there a motion to recommend Mr. LeBranch? Thank I'll you very much. Seconded by Mr. Frank, thank you very much. Uh, all those who actually were in favor of recommending this, please raise your hand. One, two, that would be Regina and Mr. Frank. Uh, all those who actually do not recommend this, please raise your hand. That would be uh, everybody else. Two, six. Yeah. So you can tell us, like when we did, in fact, reconsider our tie vote of 4-4, four, four, that's now 2-6. doesn't have anything to do with the selectmen. Oh, I thought the selectmen wanted us to reconsider no. that. Okay. Right. Me as a budget committee member. Okay. Uh, anything else, Regina? Got another one? I actually wanted to ask if the town manager would speak on articles. This is for the purpose of reconsideration? Yes. All right, so which, which one do you want to do first? Talking about that IT one, I no. Um, the one about the Navy commission. Oh, the naval. Yeah, the who wants to reconsider? Yeah, you had the Russian Navy in there. You didn't <laughs> no, know. I was saying that. I talked to. Uh, we shouldn't allow it. I was involved with these committees. No, I'm not. Well, you were, all right. The naval committee fund is what you're referring to. Uh, we voted on December 26, zero eight. To recommend that is to say not to recommend right unanimously right. what article number again 41 41 thank you Formally 42 right thank you <laughs> was it formally 43 as well <laughs> it was 41 it's not an official number anyway so if those at home don't pay attention to the numbers well could i ask the town manager to speak on it if the committee won't does the committee it? object to reconsidering the no i see no objection Mr. Mr. Uh, Town Manager, uh, Craig Welsh, you're welcome to give us much wisdom on this. <laughs> Chairman, I'm good for the staff. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, the reason we placed this article or requested it be placed, <clears throat> as you know, we had the USS Hampton here for two years. Um, we had a USS Hampton committee. Uh, the Hampton contributed something in the order of more than $50,000 worth of work to the town uh, in building different facilities and helping us clean the town up. Uh, we were asked by the Department of the Navy to host the, uh, the USS Virginia, which replaced the Hampton over at the Navy Yard, uh, and they've already committed to do more than $30,000 worth of work for the town, uh, basically in Kids Kingdom, which needs to be completely rebuilt. Um, the town does have to invest something in the order of $15,000 in drainage work over there in order to get the work done. Uh, the $10,000 was placed in here because the members of the committee have been taking the money out of their pocket to uh, host these people and to take them to town events and to town activities. Uh, and uh, we thought that was inappropriate to do that, uh, but we should... Uh, bring these uh, people to um, the various activities that are conducted in the town by the, the Historical Society and other groups, uh, and we have to pay for that. So uh, we thought that was inappropriate to have these people take that out of their pocket as the host committee, um, which seemed a little far-fetched considering in this particular case, we're getting $30,000 worth of work out of them for the Kids, kids Kingdom to, res to, uh, to erect it uh, and to do some other work in town. So. That was the reason the, the money was put in there, and I guess that's the explanation. Fred, um, is this a government committee? It's no. a town committee. It was created by the Board of Selectmen? Yes. So uh, is it an advisory committee to the Board of Selectmen? It's just a committee. It's not advisory to anybody. It's a committee to do this job. All right. So the Board of Selectmen created this committee? That's correct. And they, and they are assigning or 
Yeah, assigning people to work on that committee. People right? volunteer for the committee, the right. selectmen appoint them, and uh, they move forward from there. Yeah, how many people are on, how many seats are on the committee? Uh, it's unlimited. Right now, I believe there are six people on the committee. Okay. Thank you. Can I speak to why I originally had a Regina, this? would you like to flow? Yes. It goes back to the whole transparent thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was asked by Mike Edgar to be the Board of Selectmen rep to this committee. And then time went by, never heard anything. And then I found out they had a meeting, which I don't even know if they really had the meeting or not, but subsequently I found out there was another meeting and I stressed my concerns with the town manager about how I'm asked to be a selectman rep and I don't even know when these meetings are occurring. So we had that conversation and the message was relayed over to, uh, actually Mike Edgar came in I believe last Monday and the reason why the meeting time change got made was so that I could attend because I have a selectman meeting at 7 o'clock so they're going to push the meeting up to 6 o'clock and they're going to make sure I stay informed and I want to try to recruit some young people so that we can continue this. I think this is something good for the town. I think if we can get these Navy guys who are here for two years anyway to come in and do some work, but I want to be involved and I want, I want to be the communication point between what goes on and you know, bringing that back to the board so the board can stay up. And I think my transparency issues were concerned. I had to sort of get in the middle of it. I've had subsequent discussions with both Renee and Mike Edgar and that's why I'm asking the, the board to be considerate. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. We've heard the, uh, the discussion to date on why we may want to reconsider. Has anybody moved at all in terms of their previous vote? I don't. I, I, I also have You're moving, one. Frank? I'd like to reconsider this and uh, in my vote, but I also have one okay. question. Mm -hmm. uh, are these active duty people coming in that we're hosting? Can we to speak on this? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're, we're hosting active duty personnel, which definitely changes my vote. Fred, when we host active duty personnel, is it any, from, from any specific Navy or just Navies in general? The United States Navy. All right, because that's not specified anywhere, so. <laughs> Mr. Walker. Well, I, I, I'm proud to speak uh, with this because I'm the only one sitting at this table, I think, Mr. Pluff will attest to that, that was heavily involved from day one. 1996, yeah. this stuff about, and I know Mr. Welch is delivering a message and I appreciate it for this, this stuff about the committee members spending their own money, really? We raised money, we had the governor at a cookout at Tuckfield, Mr. Pluff was there in 96. I was involved in three command. We hosted the USS Hampton. These guys do a great job, but they did public service as part of their Navy duties. And, and I don't know whether, I'm, I'm really concerned, and I absolutely concur with what Mr. LeBranch said. This is a road we should be going down, that to throw $10,000 into a Naval Committee fund, we were proud to be a part of it. And I'm gonna use Michael Roy and the Roy family, and Stephen was at that event too. Michael Roy years ago, and the family paid for a huge dinner. Remember that, Stephen? Down the, it was in the casino. Paid. They didn't mind paying at all. There's all kinds of people that have done. Stephen's done volunteer work. I, I just, I've paid out of my own pocket. I still keep in t contact with three of the USS Hampton guys. I knew all. Th I happen to be at all three uh, commanders. One, I went to a change of guard ceremony in Norfolk. I love the fact, the idea of the committee, and I'm glad that you're going to be on it. But this stuff about giving them, uh, supporting this naval committee, I think we're, all, and, and as far as what it's costing, uh, you know, I don't know what Fred said about 30,000, this and that. Listen, they're doing community service. There's a lot of groups that do community service for us in this town, and also retired military, never mind active. Mm -hmm. I think it would really take away from uh, this. And the only other thing I'm gonna add, the USS Hampton Committee raised money by selling mugs by selling t-shirts, by selling hats. Arthur Moody was on the, yeah. the christening of the USS Hampton back in 1991. Um, I was very involved all the years I was a selectman, proud of it. Um, I, I just, I don't like the, the strategy that they're talking about. I don't have any intentions of changing my vote on this and it's nothing to do with whether I'm for them. I love the Navy, I love the military. 
but we never went down this road. I, I don't, I'm not for it. All right, we're all ready to vote now. All those who actually want to vote to recommend this. Uh, who, who made the motion? Mr. LeBranch to recommend? Seconded by Mr. Frank, no doubt. Mm -hmm. uh, all those who actually want to vote to recommend this, please raise your hand. Uh, I see two, uh, Mr. Frank and Ms. Regina. All those who do not want to recommend, please raise your hand. Uh, that would be everyone except everyone else. I'm staying. Except Jerry, who's abstaining. So, 251. 251. So it is. Next and I, can I just make one a compliment to Regina because it means a lot to Mike Pluff and I, especially and a, and a few others. I really appreciated the other night of you haven't made your final decision, and I want to thank Mr. Welch too. That in the in memoriam page you're going to put Sandy Buck on there. Sandy was very involved with the USS Hampton, very very yeah. involved among other things. So that made me feel good. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Regina? Sandy had to deal with me in high school. Thank you. Oh, yes, that's correct. <laughs> Deal with I'm sure you were a good student. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have other requests for reconsideration? I'm done, thank you. Anyone else have any other requests for reconsideration? <laughs> okay, great. So we're done with the uh, all of the one articles, it appears, except for the budget one article. <coughs> Christy, you have a base number that we're working off of after amendments that we've already made to date, correct? Did you want to, you said we're done with the Warren Uncles, excuse me. Except the budget Warren Uncle. Well, Barbara still has that open question on uh, number 18, which is the fireman's, fireman's uh, turnout gear, which I thought we voted on in unanimous. We did. We did. We did. We did. Eight, zero, zero. 800. Zero. Okay, then there's no question. No, no question, it's just uh, the typo. On the new one that Christy gave oh, us is a type. Oh, okay. It says zero zero zero. It should say eight zero zero. That's from Christina, and I don't believe that any of them have votes on it for the. Do they? No, they any do. of the budget committee yeah. have votes? Yeah, no, no. they do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all right, Mr. Chair. Okay. We'll so, go ahead. Sorry. Turnout here was unanimous in favor. Eight zero zero. Yeah. Okay. Christy, what is the base number that we presently have for the proposed? Uh, twenty-eight million one hundred seventy-eight thousand five hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Assuming that all of these adjustments that I gave to you, I had sent them in an email a week or so ago, but I put them in this format that's familiar to our budget books that um, are all, some of them were motions that have, the committee has already changed and other ones were things that have been discussed and I was asked for numbers on, so. And what do we have for a uh, default? The default budget is $27,595,116. The Delta? The default, the 19 budget versus the 19 default is $583,413. That's the uh, between the, the 19 district, the operating budget requested and the default. The budget the, committee budget, yep. Five eighty three four two thirteen. I thought it was close to six hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you were almost right on. Mm -hmm. It was very close. Okay, I got the the, the one article on the monitor with the numbers that we just heard yep. plugged in. So you can tell me if I'm wrong or not. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's where we're going to proceed from. Is that base? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I have, yes. Okay. Great. We're all on the same page, or screen at least. <laughs> Comments, questions on the budget one? Right, we're going to be dealing with uh, the proposed budget, not the default budget, That's as correct. you know. Uh, and we're going to be dealing with it just like we did last night with the <coughs> SAU 90. We're going to vote to move a specific number into this one article. I have tentatively put one in there now. It's tentative. And that's this one right here. We're going to move that and discuss, yeah. 
No, we're not going to move it. Um, I'm just saying we need to move a number into this warrant. Oh, correct. Into this yeah, warrant. we have it. The one. And so we're going to decide what that number is, and then subsequently we'll decide whether we recommend That's the correct. warrant itself. Okay. Just a reminder. Same thing we did last night yeah. with the city of ninety. Mr. Weber. Um, I don't know if we want to take these together, but one of the first motions that I want to make, I want, and, and Christy, you could help me on this, I want to reduce the parking enforcement unit to the net, to 2018 numbers when Recreation Diana Martin, when it was under her, and I also want to exclude any raises that are in this proposed budget. For a parking administration? Yes, okay. which would obviously take out that 22,000 director or whatever they're calling these mm -hmm. people. So I, I'd like to uh, make that motion. Where is that, Brian? Is that in the it's under the, the budget book. No, but I mean, the we have a number for that, Kristen. Well, this is the first time I've been asked. Right. So. No, I understand it. Yeah. Um, let's see. So if you're looking, oh, I went to Parks and Rec. Sorry, we're talking about parking administration. Hold on, I went to the wrong tab. <laughs> you can help with this. Remember, it's not a lot. Oh, I know. It's got to be a parking. Yeah, parking. Parking. Okay. We need a second before she does that. So in 2018. We need a number. Oh, number, that's right. Well, if you're just looking at the 2018 budget, if that's the number that you're looking for, it's $84,726. Right. Yes. And that number represents? The 2018 budgeted parking number. Unit. I think that's what he was asking for. For a parking administration? Yes. So 84,000, okay, 84,726. Yes. That would be about right because the proposed is 137. The proposed is 137,213 dollars. Right. $137,213. So yeah. you want to flatten that out? Is that what you're saying? I want to flatten that right out to the, uh, not even with the actual, I want to put the request, the budget amount was 84,726. For 2018, the current That's budget, correct. yep. So yeah. Can we get a delta on that so we know what we're reducing by or proposing to reduce by? $52,487. Yes. And the only thing I'll point out there, the one item that you may wish to leave in is that the um, lease for the Church Street lot goes up by a thousand each year, so it's going from twenty-one to twenty-two thousand um, in nineteen. So just to point that out. We're about what about, right? what about uh, parking attendant raises that are occurring? If any, he took those out. He asked me to remove them, so I'm right. giving him the number yeah. that is. You asked for the 18 budget number. No, no, I, and so I, that's I'm why happy I gave what you said, but I wanted to add on this lease thing. We seem to find money to do a lot of things. Okay, I'm just pointing it out. dollars. I don't want to touch the lease thing. I want that number, 84726. Right. I'm assuming that you don't want to take away the raises already given to the parking attendants, right? Not to take any raises, any new raises that that, that we talked. Mm -hmm. Well. She's giving you 2018 numbers, which right. don't include any raises that occurred in 2019. Excuse me, in 2018, right? Well, no, 2018 because they may have been paid out of the merit pay thing. Not sorry. the parking lot, I don't think. I don't know. They're, they're seasonal. Uh, yeah, I don't think they were in the merit. No, they there was no raises for them in 2018. I don't know if there was any raises for them, but there was no raises off of the merit line. I yeah, don't know so if they okay. had any pay okay. increases. So we, we, I assume you don't want to cut anyone's pay, basically. No, I don't want to cut him. So no. if that's so, case. we got a proposal from Mr. Warburton to, to reduce the bottom line by fifty-two thousand four hundred eighty-seven dollars. Is that the right number, Christy? Yes. And this is to basically bring back the cost of parking administration to reflect it as it was when it was done by the Park and Recreation Director for decades. Okay, is that right? Yes. All right. <coughs> Do I? Can you have that figure? 
52,000. That's the deductible. Yeah. Redu reducing the bottom line by 52,487. Yeah. I know I have a second by anybody. I'll second it. Ms. Barnes seconded it. Mr. Warburton, you wish to speak on your motion, I think. Well, yeah, and, and I think I, you just once again, good segue in, from your last comment that many of us on this committee and have had, uh, had questions, and, and we're not going to get any operations things, but I just got to know where I'm going with this. For many years, this was part of the recreation department. And this was a big part of the recreation department, you know, maybe 25% of what they do. It was taken away from them. Uh, I, I don't see any reason for it. And, and one of the reasons that really led me to look at this this year, Mr. Chairman, this has gone way up. I mean, it went, you know, it averaged 84000 So now it, it proposes 137 which it includes a $22,000 parking director, a flat number like that. I, I don't get it. And we, they've got tons of supervisors, all this thing. I think it ran smoothly. We always make money down there. Um, I'd like to go back to what the original budget was because I think it was running fine. Great. Any other comments on uh, or questions on this uh, motion? Mr. Pluff. She's got her head. you have a question? Can I just make a comment? <laughs> go ahead. Um, some of the money was moved from the police department budget into this budget, so I just want to make sure that you are aware of that. So. Um, the parking enforcement used to be in the, for the people who give like the tickets down there and stuff, that part was in the police budget. So it's right. fine if you cut it from here, but you also are kind of cutting it out of the police because now that money is no longer in the police budget just to keep right. that But in it mind. should be in the police budget. Well, right. you may want to put it back then. No. That's all I'm suggesting. I just want to make sure you're aware. No, of I am very well aware of it. We can't so. put it back unless we know how much it is. Right. I could probably figure that out from my notes in the back. Okay, any other comments on the proposed reduction? Mr. LeBrand. That's what they spend. This is what they I remember asking this just because of what Christy just said. I have some notes here I wrote. The revenue from 2018 season from the parking lots as of 9.30 was $498,209, which is close yeah. enough to what we need to know right now. And then revenue from parking tickets, because they, they combined they combined this. Is that correct? Be before, the, the couple of people that worked this, do the tickets up on the numbered streets under were under the police department's budget. Does that sound about right? So they took it out of the police and they put it in this. And if you get rid of that, then those people probably won't be able to work next summer and give out tickets and raise that, that revenue that I wrote here that Christy told us was, um, I think, the tickets. I wrote down 39000 and then hyphen 66000 So that's quite a bit of money. I don't know that, you know, if they, if, if the guys that wrote tickets, wrote tickets for $66,000, is that money that goes to the town revenue? From Jeez. those tickets, yes. Not but from, like, a speeding ticket, but from the No, 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 tickets. but the parking tickets, yeah. right. Um, I don't know that's if why I, I was pointing that out to Brian. I know, so and that's he knew that why in case I he wanted to put it back. Better, some of it, not all of it. I mean, we got to put it back in the place. Hold on a second. Give Christy a chance to work on the number. Right. No, but you see what it, uh, the only thing yeah, I'm you're saying. making the same case that Christy made. Right. And Christy was was working on producing a number. Okay. And so I'm going to give an opportunity <coughs> to do that. <coughs> okay. Okay. Any other comments pending mm -hmm. the? Invest our analysis by Christy on any other aspects of this motion, well, Mr. Walberg. Well, to Mr. LeBranch's point, the parking ticket, what you're referring to, is still under the, it's all under the police department realm. On this, I just turned the page. I mean, it's, it's under part time wage. It says PT, parking enforcement offices, right. $15 an hour times eight hours times three shifts times four offices times 11 weeks. And that number is. Fifteen thousand uh, eight hundred and forty dollars. 
Okay. Yeah, and so. the, right above that, you have the parking enforcement director, twenty-two thousand dollars. Right. So if we have to move that or whatever, I think what Tim is saying. My motion is to reduce the bottom line. No, I understand, Brian. And as far as revenue goes, Steve, when I was running state parks, we had the same amount of people. So one year we made two million, next year we make a million and a half. It, it, it really is real relevant on who's working there, or how many. I'm not if that's what you're referring to, but four hundred something thousand. That's great. We had a great summer. I mean, maybe next year maybe three fifty. I mean, yeah. No, no, I, I realize the weather. It's all weather related, weather driven. Anything else? Anybody else? All right, Mr. Walbert, you want to change your motion to reflect the number that Christie's working on, is that correct? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know. Well, I don't think we're ready to vote for this one. I mean, this is what happens when we create these things. You know, it, it's now, it's good. You, know. um, you want to come back to this one? Well, we need to give Christie time, so. Yeah. yeah. You got another one? Well, because I'm going to, she's going to have to do some, well, no, she won't do it. I'd like to visit cemetery. Uh-huh. Cemetery budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we asked, which we never, the presentation we got in here, and I think, Mr. Welch, I think you were here last, that night with Mr. Chevalier, and I, we specifically asked, we were very confused. They were confused that they were getting raises they didn't even know, and I asked, we asked them to come back with the trustee. <coughs> uh, I appreciate the Warren articles, which we all approve for the cemetery, uh, from the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund. But when you look at the, the bottom line on the, the, uh, the cemetery budget, um, it's gone up 81%. Yeah. And when I brought up the subject about 47,840, the guy, Brian Chevalier, sat there, didn't even know that. He didn't even know what he was going to be making. And he didn't even know he was the, what was he called? The, the sexton. The sexton. He didn't even know it. So I'm concerned about how this whole budget was prepared. No, he knew he was called the sexton. He didn't but he didn't know what he was going to do. No, get. he didn't know the definition. So can I just ask a question before I make a motion to the manager? Who, did we ever get any report or from the trustees <coughs> or from Mr. Chevalier on the questions we asked is why these big increases, especially when they put in three big warrant articles for all these contracted serious services, and they said they're going to come back to us and moving of vaults and all that stuff. And then health insurance, the question I have, if he's full time and he's deserving of health insurance, he didn't know the answer to that. I, I, I just don't know how I can, does anybody else feel that way? I just thought that we both, we were all on the same page on this. I mean, how do we arrive at the 90? That's a huge increase. 81% increase right. in the cemetery budget? Yeah. What's the dollar amount? Well, but okay, but the dollar amount went from the actual until 2018, 98, 295, and they're requesting 223, 626. Yeah. Sounds a lot more than 81%. Well, it says 81, but you know what they did? It's misleading because, thank you, Mr. Chairman, because the contracted services <coughs> went from, it actually went um, up 350%, but in dollar amount, it went up 7,000. Yeah. So that's why that number, it almost thinks that, you're right, it, it, the logical mind, right, Jeremy would say it's actually more like 90-something, but I so, guess I'm just questioning. So the dollar my, difference is what? Uh, the dollar right. difference from the proposed uh, the proposed 2019 budget, 223, 626, from the actual, well, actually, let me rephrase that, because this is um, this is the old figures. Uh, Christy, what is the? Well, Christy's working on something okay. else right now. So the actual budgeted amount for 2018 was 123, 138. The requested amount is almost 100, actually almost $100,000 more. Yeah. So you're talking about a $100,000 increase. Yeah. In the budget, mm, right. in the cemetery budget. And my question is, with four warrant articles, or at least three that we approve, but all the work needs to be done, well, why do we have this cemetery budget so high when we never had it like this? No, he was in? Was the cemetery? Well, no, they were in, but they had no information. Right. Nothing. Right. Well, did you bring up the Yeah, they, they, they were not able they to. Had they had no idea. Fred was answering some of the questions yeah. in previous meetings. But the cemetery trustees themselves. Can we themselves, shed some light, Fred? Cemetery trustees themselves were not. She didn't have a. She didn't know what. We're not a fountain of uh, 
of knowledge. <laughs> of knowledge. As far as the wages were concerned, the cemetery trustees voted to increase the wages in accordance with what's in the budget. So these people are being paid in accordance with that now. They voted that last fall. But Fred, can I ask you a question? Because I brought this up last night to the school board because I'm very in tune. When I asked the trustee about that, she had no idea what that was for. I can't answer oh, what right, somebody but else I does, okay? <laughs> Uh, what I can tell you is that that was all discussed at a trustees oh, meeting. Boy. In fact, it was discussed at three different trustees meetings, and that's what they voted. They voted to give them raises in accordance with that. They also voted to hire in the next year two part-time additional employees. The cemetery, quite frankly, is in a mess. Mm -hmm. I don't want to underemphasize that, and I don't want to overemphasize it. We have moved approximately, I think, somewhere in the order of eight burials at this point who are in somebody else's grave slots. They're, they're $2,500 a piece to move those. That's you, you move the entire vault and everything. Yeah. It's done by a professional. Mm -hmm. um, we've also lost eight graves that we could sell, I understand, at this point. And there's more to come. Are we covered by insurance when that happens? No, we're not. And was any Malmus and non-feasance isn't covered by insurance. Was any consultation done with the former cemetery director to have maybe have him help uh, give you guidance on what's going on down there? Well, we, we, I can't comment on that because of his litigation. <laughs> on the burial thing, you're probably going to get more. Uh, there are more, yeah, we don't and, know. And, and, and we're finding them as we go along. Yep, and, and the, the issue here really is uh, when someone comes in and they have a deed to a particular plot, and, and right. Brian's familiar with how they do this, there is a deed issued to every plot that you purchase. They come in, they show us the deed, they have a burial to, to in fact, go ahead and consummate and, and, and hire a, uh, a crew to come in and do that burial. And we go out and we look at the, uh, we look at the plot, and there's a stone on it with somebody else's name on it. Right. So and there are two or three bodies buried in it. Fred, let me ask you that, 47840, so <coughs> maybe you could help me. So is Mr. Chevalier, that's going to be a full-time position with health insurance? It's a part-time position, and the right. regular wages, there, are, there, are, there is he, and there is uh, two <coughs> more than half-time employees. They're under the part-time. They're under the part-time mm -hmm. category. That's his wage. The regular is for a full-time. Right. Yeah, the, 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 the title of Sexton is in the statute. That's why we're using it. Right, but what I'm saying is, that's what I just asked. The regular yeah. wages say the line item funds the wages of a cemetery to Sexton, and it shows 47840, right. just for that's, him. That's, yes. that's correct. That's just for him. That's what I'm asking. Right. So is he needing of the health insurance with that position? He, uh, he, there has always been a stipend in the, in the budget or a cost in the budget for that. Um, as you can Put see... Uh, for a two-person coverage, <coughs> uh, yes, that would be his. As, as but I got the well, the reason. That's a good question, I think, because that's twenty thousand dollars. That's correct. So has he committed? Like, for instance, if I don't take my insurance, I get you know whatever, but uh, whatever you want to call. It. Has he said that? Because it's important. If not, we're going to we're going to reduce it. Is he going to take the ta health insurance? Do we know? He's not going to be the person for sure. They don't know. Right? They just want to hire someone. No, no, he's oh. he's hired as a sexton. He is the permanent sexton. He he's is only part time right now. He, he is part time right now. Right. And, this is proposed by right. right. And 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 if they make him full time, that will be the figure that has to go in there to pay that to pay that expense. I don't think we know what if he will take health insurance, if but we always whenever right. we whenever we right. put on a new or put a position in that needs to be filled. That's not really new because there was a full-time person there. Oh, I'm we always aware. put, yeah, we always put in a health insurance cost. We always base it on the two-person plan right. for our lowest plan that we offer. I, so I that's just, how I got the 20000 Yeah, but well, I just find it strange that, I mean, this guy was just swept right into the, the takeover, that there's been no discussion in six months or eight months since the other director has left to say to the new section, are you going to be wanting this? Or <coughs> you see what I'm saying? I, I don't. That's a decision they're going to. The cemetery trustees are going to have to make. But the cemetery trustees, in all they, fairness, this, uh, this is their budget. Well, this is the money they put in their budget. They have talked about it at three different meetings. Okay. If they don't understand what's in the budget, I I can't. And I appreciate comment. that. But this is why 
those of us may vote against this budget. We specifically asked the trustees to come back more information. So I guess if I'm asking Fred Welch for 150,000 and you're a town manager and you need me to come to a meeting to explain, because you've said three times tonight that the trustees did this, wouldn't you think they'd <coughs> want to be here to answer these questions? I can't answer that for you because I'm, pl I'm placing my mind. No, I understand that. I, uh, I, I think when they left here, they left here with the understanding that they weren't coming back. I think that's what they left with an understanding with. Frankly, that's the understanding I left that meeting with. No, we asked for more information because well, the trustee said that she, they were very confused and we, well, I'd have to watch whatever, but I just found it interesting because they always showed up before, but I don't know. Present their budget, so go ahead. I, I don't have Christy, anything. do you have a number that you're working on? Mean that? For the parking? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Do you want to share it with them? Yes, okay. I can share it with you. Yeah. The number for the part-time parking enforcement officers is the $15,840. So that should be That tight. was just for the parking enforcement, whether you choose to leave it here or put it into the police budget or remove it, that's up to the budget committee. But I just want to share all the information with you, just so you know that if you do cut that whole amount, you you know cut the 15000 for parking enforcement also. Right. So if we excluded that 15840 yeah, it would be from the motion, yeah. we could leave, we could hold the police department harmless with this cut, right? In regards to parking enforcement. Right. So that 52 would have become 37. Right. Yeah, so it, it, the numbers would be uh, the new budget amount. If you chose well, to leave in the 15000 it would be $100,566. And the delta from the um, 2000 and from the proposed or whatever is thirty six thousand six hundred and forty seven. Thirty six six four seven. So your motion is actually for thirty six six four seven. Hold on, I have to take all this back. You know why? Because this is the one that had the mathematical correction, and I'm looking at my uh -oh. old book. So it's actually going to be more money, more of a delta. So hold on one sec. Oh, Let me very good. <laughs> get yeah, you the new a, number. Yeah. The, the number we should be working off right? of is. The budget is 213,284. And if you take off the the 30, let's see. Say that again, 200 what? Let her, let her think. Wait, hold on, we're on cemetery. Oh no, we're on parking, sorry. Right, I was gonna say that's way up. I'm sorry, I, can't, I stand corrected. <laughs> I stand corrected. The cemetery one is throwing me off because there was a correction in there. Yep. My numbers are accurate for what I gave a second what? ago. All right, so you think the motion uh, to, would be numerically representative of the intent of Brian by saying $36,647 reduction in the bottom line, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. So we have a motion, Mr. Warburton, right? And Correct. we have a second, whoever it was. I'll second. Or Virginia was the second, that's right. So and we're reducing the bottom line by the stated $36,647 which is intended to reflect the well, change back to how parking administration was done relative to the money. And pretty, yes, it, right. When Diana Martin was here. And pretty much the 36647 includes the $22,000 that would have been the proposed. Yeah. So in actuality, we're only cutting like $14,000. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not saying that, but so you want to say to the public, this is not a bad thing because we're really not changing. We, we went along with what Chrissy said with the parking enforcement. So I like this motion. 36647 uh, is my figure. Any, well, that's uh, the savings. The savings is well, the how, What was the The final motion number? is 100 th reduced from 137 to 213. The motion to amend is 100,566. We're only amending the bottom line anyway. So. Right, right. Yeah. And I'll make that motion. Yeah, we already did. It's thirty-six thousand six hundred forty thousand dollars, six hundred forty-seven dollar reduction in the bottom line that's <coughs> being proposed. Does everyone understand that? Yes. Motion. Yes. Finally. Okay. Great. Does anyone want to talk about it? Great. Thank you. <laughs> We're all ready to vote on this, right? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of this proposed reduction, raise your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. All those abstaining, raise your hand. What's the vote? So everyone was in favor except Jerry, who abstained. 7 1. Oh, 7 0. Seven, so we're back to the cemetery. Let me so just go through some of the line items. Cemetery? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Thank you, Fred. Hold on. Let me just get. 
just get to that cemetery <sighs> thing again. Make uh -oh. sure you use my sheet that I... Tonight's sheet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah hold my on. My other sheet doesn't have the budget committee. You know what? Hold on one on second. So. That's where I was making a mistake a minute ago and I got confused. Uh -oh. We were talking about parking. Let me just grab <coughs> that real quick. Hold on. Because you found that mathematical error, Brian, and that's been corrected. That's why I suggest that you make sure you look at the um, sheets that were given tonight. Hold on one second. Is this the one dated 12, 12 4? Yeah. 110. 110 tonight? Yep. She, had a, she gave us a handout. Yeah, I know that, but I. And it's the same one I emailed to you. I know, but you had it all in a nice clip, and where yes. I can't seem to find it right it's now. It's on OB, oh, where it is. I got OBS it. 6. Hold it, hold on. I got it. Hold on. OBS 6 it is. Yes. What did you say? OBS I just want to make sure OBS we're all OBS talking about the same thing. Uh, uh, yeah, right. Thank you. All right, I'm there. <laughs> thank you, Fred. Well, because we get these said, but thank you. You have the budget committee column high, uh, populated on the sheet you're looking at. Oh, right? very nice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and the total should be two hundred thirteen thousand two hundred eighty-four dollars. Right. I just want to make sure we're all working for yeah. the same document. Yeah. Okay. Where? Where is it? At the total at the bottom for cemeteries. Right. <coughs> no, I've got it right here. You just said 234. 213. 284. 284. Where is it, though? At the bottom right of the page. OBS 6. I have it right here. I don't see. You said BS 6. OBS 6. Oh, you got the wrong sheet. Let, here. This, is wrong sheet. this says January 3rd, the one I just got tonight. Right here. This, this one says 110. Take this. Well, dated 110. Yeah, all the ones are dated 110 from tonight. All right, well, uh, uh, there probably isn't a change. But. All right, that. You emailed this anyway, right? Yeah, okay. So, I'm sorry, yes, 223. 213, 284. Right. 213.24, okay, I'm on that page, yeah. Let's start with contracted services because the rest of them are based upon wages or employment data and so on and so forth, and you how, you're very familiar on how that works anyhow yep. in, the, in the system. Uh, contracted services, uh, that has to do with uh, all of the improvements that need to be done in order to move grave sites. We're continuing to do that. Um, we, we end up having to do maintenance work, which hasn't been done in a long time. Um, give you an idea of the condition of the grounds up there. One of the areas that they went last fall to clean up and rake up, which hadn't been able to be done because they hadn't had the time and, and equipment and material, uh, there was no grass left. All the grass in that particular area up in the back of the cemetery is completely gone. It has to be completely replanted and seeded and, and treated and so on and so forth. Um, the areas in the front of the cemetery, same thing. It's just loaded with grubs. They're eating the grass right out of the cemetery. Wow. So there's a lot of money in there to correct those problems. That's under contracted services, Fred? Yeah, that will be under contracted services, that's yes. I mean, that's a, those are expensive things to do. Yeah. Um, telephone, of course, is, 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 is pretty flat. That's um, because we do have a telephone in there. We do have a message center in there in case people need to, uh, need to call and give messages. Electric. Uh, of course, we're doing a little bit of retrofit in there because we're closing up and putting some lighting in the garage and so forth, so there's a small increase there. Uh, heating fuel, same way. There's an increase there because we intend to put a, a gas, gas heat in there mm -hmm. in order so they can do work in the wintertime yeah, when yeah. they need to. Mm -hmm. um, water, uh, that's strictly off the water rate that was given to us by the, uh, the water company. So uh, I think that's... In my opinion, that's very high, but that's what the water, water rate brings it, brings it to. Maintenance and repairs, uh, we try to keep that flat. Uh, as you know, they try to do all their own repair work in there, and Brian, you're familiar with that over the years. They've done a lot of that in-house. Um, supplies and expenses, now we get down into costs because they need, they need equipment. Uh, they've been doing uh, chainsaw cutting without the proper safety equipment. We need to buy that equipment in order for them to continue those cleanup expenses, things of that nature. Um, there's also uh, on supplies and expenses, you have uh, uh, chaps, you've got uh, all those uh, safety helmets, goggles, uh, ear, ear pieces, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then they have the rakes and shovels and whatever else they need in that area. <laughs> and there will be some of those that need to be replaced along with uh, trimmers. Uh, before, apparently, what we've been doing is we've been buying 
the type of trimmer you and I would buy in our, our yard. Mm -hmm. and they don't last very long because they're just yard type trimmers instead of cemetery type trimmers. So we're trying to buy some, some heavy duty jobs Commercial. out of this account that will last for a couple of two or three years. Did they use Husqvarna or John Deere? You don't know. Uh, John Deere, I think, is what they're looking to use because that's a better, and Husqvarna is another good one as well. Um, so that line has doubled, more than doubled for Oh yeah, it, it doesn't take much when you get into commercial grade well, equipment to, right. to, to spend money on this equipment. It's very expensive stuff. Uh, we'd like to find a way to get the, a fleet of goats to go in there and take care of it, but it just doesn't work right now. Um, gasoline, uh, that's an estimate based upon the fact that we're going to have a tractor. Uh, and we have other equipment that we're running in addition to the mowers tractor. and so forth. Cemetery improvements, we have to do some improvements in the cemetery for stones. We have a number of stones that have been toppled. Uh, these are the spiral type, uh, spire type stones. We've had a couple have been tops of them have been knocked off. They're going to have to be reset commercially. Um, and there are, if you go up and take a look, <clears throat> it's interesting because I did. I went through and purposely walked through a large portion of the cemetery. There are something in the order of 275 bull pines in there. Oh, yeah. And you walk by a bunch of them. Most of them have, are infested with ants. Carpenter ants, yeah. but those that uh, that are in there, a lot of them you'll walk by and you'll see that the stones, the headstones, are this high off the ground. They're inside the trees. They've been picked right up off the ground. The roots. Those are going to have to be taken down. They're going to have the stones are going to have to be reset. We have a dozen stones that we're going to have to replace because they're completely deteriorated and broken. Uh, those things are expensive. Replacement equipment. Uh, the cemetery trustees, they had discussed this with the, uh, with the crews, wow. and they had been buying uh, non-commercial lawn mowers, the, the riding mowers, and yeah. we've both seen them, and I, I know Brian's seen them. Uh, this money is to purchase two commercial riding mowers and the equipment that goes with them. And that's expensive stuff. It's not cheap. Yeah. So we, there's a lot of money in there for that. Hopefully this equipment instead of being replaced every two or three years, it's going to be replaced every five or six years because it is commercial grade. That kind of gives you a rundown of what they told me, what they asked me for in the budget, what they talked about, and we estimated those costs out and put them in the budget for them. So he's gone from 118 to 118,000 to 213. Yeah, and my estimation, having been a cemetery sexton, having been a public works director for quite a number of years, is that that's light. Yeah. They could use another hundred grand in order to get them in, in less than 10 years. What, they need to what, what was the uh, problem with the coats? Uh, we don't, don't allow animals to the cemetery. That's no the problem purpose. with the coats. So it's the selectman's policy that's preventing it? No, the cemetery trustees don't allow animals in the... Uh, so in the, the cemetery the, trustees yeah. themselves are not allowed. There's a regulation against the animals in the... So they, but they could change that. Well, they could, but then again, they'd have to clean up for the goats. Well, they make good fertilizer too, don't they? Well, it's good fertilizer. Did you say? Uh, are you saying oh, goats, goats or goats? Goats. goats. In case you didn't know it, Brian. <laughs> if you don't want to buy the weed whippers, you got to buy the goats. For <laughs> over a hundred years, the White House itself, its yeah. lawnmower was a was a goat. Oh, the, the, okay. You, you put a goat out there, they'll eat the grass. Well, we weren't going to talk dandy. about those. Like beavers are, and dams, we goats and grass. We weren't going to talk about those who wanted to hold the office, just those who wanted to do the work. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a perfectly viable approach, in my mind, to use goats for such a such Well, a task. There, that's something that's been going on recently in the county yeah. in a number of different instances, and it's something that's going to have to probably be done in the cemetery real soon because there's a number of areas in there that need to be cleaned out that are infested with uh, things that we shouldn't be touching. So we're going to go with goats eventually? Eventually, I think that's going to happen, yeah. So maybe we don't need those commercial rider mowers. Well, you still got the whole cemetery to mow. You got the rest of more goats. <laughs> uh, no, that, uh, you'd need too many goats to do that. That's a pretty big cemetery. Then we, then we have to hire our goat herder. And give them health insurance. And health insurance. And health insurance. Who can walk the goat For the dog? Yeah, for the goat herder. Oh. He can? He's going to walk the we could have yes, honorary right. goat herders, um, and we could we could uh, have Fred, special helmets for them. Fred, yeah. thank you, and I, I want to thank you for this breakdown because I only had a couple of comments as a result. So, I guess the overall thing is, I mean, and then you look at that default number. So the one that stands out, contract of services. Oh yeah. We know thirteen five default would be three thousand because it goes back to the actual of eighteen. So right. 
on those columns that are pretty go up pretty lower uh, than what you're asking, and and that this is probably not a fair question for you because you know, not the trustee, but can you? Are you going to be able to live with? I mean, these this is some major stuff that needs to be done here, right? I mean, and I, and, and I will say um, to Mr. Walsh's benefit because he and I, <laughs> I I actually outfitted the Seacoast Parks with the John Deere's. Yeah, you did. Because yeah. we had Husqvarna's, and Fred and I used to have discussions. That's another story altogether. Because they could only equip to do certain certain small areas, and they That's don't correct. last long. So these, this price for that is fine. The only other question I have is, and, and I'm glad, I really appreciate you and Christy doing this. Um, Fred, so why, with the Warren articles we did, why wouldn't that have been put in a, uh, the Warren article be funded by the cemetery uh, burial fund, I guess? Is that because well, it's, a, it's a basic expense, a one-time? The, the Warren article is because it's capital equipment. Oh, okay. We wanted to take it out of the capital account. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have anything else. Okay. Mr. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not dealing with any motions now, right? I, I don't think so. Uh, okay. No. We I, all understand that there is no motion on the table, and correct? One, yeah. one, one question. Clarification. Sure. sure. You said gasoline for the tractor? I think that one's diesel, but the, all the other equipment's gas. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. The, all the small yeah. stuff is well, gas. When we say gasoline in the cemetery, everything had been lumped under one category, oh, so we just they, they lumped They separated everything. it out. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. It isn't segregated, so. Yeah, we're, we're still discussing the budget number we're going to put in the budget warrant article. Okay. Uh, Mr. LeBranch. Okay. I'd, I'd like to ask um, the manager a couple of questions. The cemetery trustees, do they get paid? No, sir. Okay, that answers that. <laughs> now, one other thing is that... Um, Having talked to um, one of the cemetery trustees, I understand that the uh, the the way it was the way things were being done is that there was a, a shoebox perhaps with uh, some file cards in it, and and so when a new cemetery trustee was got in there a couple of years ago, um, it was it's being put into a computer. And I'm kind of surprised under the supplies that I don't see any. There's office supplies, $500. I'm su who's supplying the computer? The computer been there. They already bought that? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. been there for a couple of years. Okay. All right. Thank you. That answers that question. Okay. Are right. they are still already? working on the project. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is you. there any other amendments to consider relative to this budget number? I see none. So. You guys want to go? I, I adjusted the number, Christy. I'm sure you agree. The new number is twenty-eight million one hundred four one thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars. I didn't adjust it because I didn't know if you guys were going to make more yeah. motions. Put up there. Apparently not. Uh, I reduced it by the thirty-six thousand six hundred forty-seven that we. I was just keeping a tally here because yep. I wasn't sure where we were going. I scratched uh, out the base up there on the screen. Mm -hmm. And put the calculated oh, number on, on next to it. Eight, eight, two. So the new number is. So, Sammy, we have no further amendments. I assume we're going to move this number. Oh, and make what's a motion? the number again? Twenty. It's up on the screen. Yeah, Twenty-eight one forty-one eight eight. Can I make a motion to move it? Twenty-eight one. So done. Okay. I need a second. second. Now the motion is to put this, this number twenty-eight million one hundred forty-one thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars. In the budget warrant article as the proposed budget number. Right. That's my motion. Right. We'll have a second we'll have a second vote on the recommendation after this. Any discussion? Great. All those in favor, raise your hand. That would be almost everybody. All those opposed? Jerry's uh, abstaining. I'm, I'm in favor of, yes. Everyone's in favor except Jerry is abstaining. So we have seven zero one. Yeah, and now we have a motion by Mr. LeBrant, seconded by Mr. Mora to recommend this budget warrant article. Any discussion on the recommendation vote of this warrant article? Okay, all those who actually want to recommend this budget warrant article, please raise your hand, Mr. LeBranch. Uh, okay, all those who oppose recommending this warrant article, please raise your hand. That would be every, almost everybody else. What are you doing, Jerry? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stay. Oh. Okay, so we have one opposed, that's Little Branch. One abstain, that's uh, Zanoy. Everyone else voted nay. Also known as no. Who was in favor? 
it's the branch. You, you said know. one was opposed. He was in favor, right? I was, I was in yeah, favor of yeah. this new number that I moved. The branch was the one in favor. Right. Everybody else. Zanoy was the one in abstention. Right. That Everyone was else was voted the, negative. Right. Not one six one. Yep. Thank you. So that's one six one on our magic database vote here, which I will now populate. No. <coughs> You voted no, right? So that takes. I'm sorry. Yeah, I abstain. Yeah. If anything else under budget workshop for the town? And great. the default budget will remain the same. So we don't touch that. No, I know that. All we do is bitch about it. <laughs> public hearing Tuesday night at seven, right? New business. Uh, we have the schedule. We have a public hearing on Tuesday. Fred, I'm sure you've already approved our public notice for that meeting, right? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. I want to mention that it's here too because I've had a couple people ask. Me. I know it's on the calendar as being in this building, but I've had a couple people who were surprised when I mentioned that to them. Yeah, so it's been going on. As I just wanted to make sure we yeah. put it out there since we're on TV Great right now. Great point. We're meeting here, not at the academy, for the public hearing on Tuesday night. Tuesday being the 15th day of the year. And Regina does a great job keeping that It's at 7 o'clock, and, 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 and we will be addressing SAU 90's warrants, do, warrant articles, and the Town of Hampton's warrant articles at that time. Um, anybody else have anything else they want to chime in with or do whatever? Well. You said you wanted to get a soft shoe, perhaps. Here we go. Okay. Uh, we're adjourned. <laughs>